डॉक्टर अनुपमा Uh, I welcome you once again to this. Yes, I welcome you once again to this post lunch session. Uh, we have already been with uh, Dr. Madhukar. And uh, we are back with him once again, sir. I re I'll request you to now continue with your presentation and your um, the topic for today uh, just now is uh, validation and verification. We will also learn more about the making of the SSR report. Over to you, sir. Dr. Anupama, is sir there uh, with us? Uh, yes, he said that he has already joined, but again, I cannot see him. Um, That's what we are not able to see him. Huh. So we'll okay. wait for a minute or two. I, I'm sure he'll be joining us in a short while. Yes, let me. Uh, I will call him. Uh, sir has already joined, but we are not able to see him. So I have told him to leave and join again. Uh, so we will give uh, right. one. Yeah, we'll wait for one more minute. All right. I'm sure he is working on it. So we'll oh, wait yes. for a while. Yes. Welcome once again, sir. Okay. To this post lunch session. So I, I think you can. Continue, sir. Okay. Thank mother. you. Over to you. Okay. Uh, can I uh, request? Uh, hope uh, everybody had a good lunch and uh, have joined back. Uh, can I request uh, uh, my colleague to put on the presentation, please? Yes, Mr. Ashish, please do the needful. Dr. Ashish, please uh, put on the presentation that is the SSR presentation, not the DVV one. Ah, thank you. This is the presentation. Ah. Can you make? Uh, okay. Uh, is it visible to everybody in the audience? Can yes, sir, it is visible. Bar? Can you remove that yes, bar sir. which is 
coming in between is it possible to move the bar is it possible to move the bar uh, mr ashish okay then it uh, size becomes smaller i feel everybody is able to read yes sir we are able to read now i have lost the presentation okay uh can i go back to the first slide please initial slide starting slide okay anyway is okay we will continue from here the presentation let me read this for you anyway you can also read this presentation for educational purposes only and any an effort to promote quality of education in the country as a stakeholder it does not intend guarantee of any specific outcomes results from any accreditation process national international the institutions may pursue uh, this is a disclaimer i hope uh, uh, everybody may kindly take note of it next slide please good can you move the next slide please Yeah, next uh, uh next uh, previous slide previous slide previous slide second slide disclaimer earlier to this ah uh, next slide please now next slide ah uh, see this is for your reference a wide range of agencies are from within the and offer we can use difference of the purpose of uh, this is uh, self explanatory uh, just leave it for few seconds so that uh, uh, all participants can uh, just read it uh, then you can move to the next slide this is a kind of an advisory i have uh, uh, made for this uh, this presentation okay what is the purpose and benefits of accreditation here are few points i have just uh, noted and my uh, i always of the is of the opinion uh, that the benefits of accreditation should be looked beyond the scope of nac assessment and accreditation see an institution should look at quality as a frame of reference rather than accreditation or assessment and accreditation as a frame of reference when you look at quality as a frame of reference you the understanding that this is a long term this has a long term impact and this is a challenge to the institution to grow on a continuous basis what is called as continuous quality in improvement gets into the frame of reference so when you look at accreditation nac accreditation process is only a reflective process and that too we do it is done based on past evidences and assuming that the future will also be bright for the institution and it is a kind of a projection like you do in stock market the stocks are done well now it will and likely to do well later but other situations you have you have uh, situations are changing technology is changing uh, now uh, the new education policy 2020 has introduced lot of changes 
many institutions which are affiliated institutions my suggestion is plan to become autonomous institutions as fast as possible because this will give you a competitive edge and since i am not look speaking at those aspects of nep etc in this presentation uh, i am just stopping at that it, that in itself can be a, a presentation and a discussion on its own on its own merits uh, so let i let me uh, now uh, come back to benefits of accreditation which i have uh, noted in this slide one is internal learning during the accreditation process if internal learning doesn't happen that's why i said involve everybody in the process this process is not an exclusive process this process is not it is a, this process is not a secretive process this process is a transparent process reports etc all should be made transparent in fact in our culture in our system transparency is not a very is not our virtue in fact we keep things under lock and key we don't uh, share data we don't share issues we don't share some of we have a fear that is always we misused etc so transparency is one of the important aspects of accreditation so you have to look at transparency so internal learning to develop leadership skills at all levels very important since many times we see the decision happens only at one level principals level otherwise nobody takes any decision it is a top down approach whereas now we are moving into what is called as a bottom up approach that is what nep suggests that is what technological changes are suggesting and that is what will be important for institutions to survive with academic bank of credit other issues that is coming up in the country i believe that the top down approach should be curtailed and bottom up approach should be brought into the system that is leadership developments at all levels continuous quality enhancement mechanism has to be developed methodical documentation documentation is very important this is a gray area in our system documentations are poor in fact i suggest mis system etc to be put in place by institutions because the more in the next 20 years data collection data analysis etc will be a very vital system very vital part of uh, your institution and decision making transparency is very important branding you have to differentiate your institution from other institution what is your usp whether it's cultural whether it is uh, spiritual whether it is uh, technological etc you have to bring into picture and you have to it has to be a homogeneous institution which promotes not only education or it provides a degree but also adds ethical values etc as envisaged in the which has been envisaged in nep nep has discussed this at length i request all faculty members if you are if by chance you have not gone through the report kindly go through the nep report also so next uh, uh, next slide please can i have the next slide sir hello you are able to hear me mr ashish can you go to the next slide can you move to the next slide please mr ashish please go to the next slide please okay this is the flow chart the this is the flow chart register as i told you before i completed this registration is round the year then the institutional information of quality assessment that's the first interface registration is the first interface then you have institutional information for quality assessment iiqa the format is available in the website i think earlier somebody else or somebody else is covering this aspect i think madam rav dr rawat is talking about it maybe after this session so once institutional information for quality assessment what does it exactly do is 
to see whether the institution is eligible for accreditation or not. If it is eligible, it accepts, and then you are allowed to submit your SSR. If it is not eligible, you are rejected. Eligibility criteria is as of now, it should it should be a legal entity, and two batches of st students should have passed out. That is the basic uh, thing. Then you submit your SSR with uh, partial fee. I'm not getting into fee structure, etc. Because it's available on the NAC website, and uh, now I think they have, it is also reduced, so you can look at it. Once you submit the SSR, uh, you were uh, you were it uh, SSR will get accepted depending on whether you have uh, scored thirty percent of the mark. Then parallelly, the student satisfaction survey and the data verification and validation process starts. This is an external process in the sense that. Uh, in the sense that NAC has identified few partners who will who will verify the data that has been submitted by you through uh, submitted by you. Let me yeah, I will go in a little detail on this once I in the, my next presentation. Then there will be a peer team visit. Then the results that the grade etc. Then if you are not satisfied etc. There is an appeals mechanism. At this point in time, I'm not touching the appeals mechanism. Uh, that is also available in the website. This is. After you get the result not satisfied, you have to make an uh, appeal, etc. All this process is through a web interface. So the moment you register and IAQ is submitted, they open a website in your college name, and all interactions are web-based. There is no, so it is a web interaction, web-based interaction. Okay, next slide, please. Core structure of the process, I've already told you. Criteria, there are seven criteria, 32 key indicators, quantitative metrics, that is QNM, if you can see here. QNM and QLM, how is it uh, specified? About 70% of the weightage is to quantitative metrics and about 30% of weightage is for qualitative metrics. Qualitative metrics, again, I repeat, is text boxes, where you give explanation of what you have written and there are some limitations of words, etc., on these uh, quali qualitative metrics. Uh, the total is 5 MB, etc. These are all available on the website. You can look at it. The total metrics in case of affiliated college in the latest version is QNM of Q QLM 34 plus 21 is 55. You don't go by 70, 30, 70, 20 by the number of metrics. It is not by the number of metrics, it is by the weightage assigned to each of the metrics and that is how it is calculated. So let me, next slide please. You see to the right hand side, revised framework. This was introduced in July uh, 2017 and has undergone subsequent revisions, but the structure has remained the same. There has been no change in the overall structure. Your curricular aspect, teaching, learning, evaluation, Research innovations and extensions. Earlier it was research, research consultancy and extension. Now it has been changed to re, uh, research innovation extension, infrastructure and learning resources, student support progression, governing leadership and management, institutional values and best practices. These are the seven criteria at present. Uh, we, it has been used. This has been uh, in use from a long time and back. Uh, these are the criteria which has been retained even for the new process. Revised accreditation process. The revised accreditation process, in, in a way, is it has been effective from July 2017. Next slide, please. Now, extracts. I have talked about criteria. I have talked about criteria, key aspects, then criteria, then a matrix. Uh, uh, that is the quantitative and qualitative. Now I've just extracted an extract of key aspect 2.4, teacher profile and quality, because this I'm using it as an example in this presentation. Teacher quality is a composite term to indicate the quality of teachers in terms of their qualification, teacher characteristics, adequacy of recruitment procedures, faculty availability, professional development, etc. This is what is covered in the this is what is this aspect is what is covered into questions either qualitative or quantitative in the NAC 
in the which is this is an extract from the manual in the matrix this this aspect of converted in form of questions so that when you read this and then understand you will can refer to and fro so that you can understand the questions and respond accordingly next slide please now i talked about student satisfaction survey this is again 2.7 part of the teaching learning uh, uh, teaching learning process this is part of criteria 2 teaching learning and evaluation in that there is this uh, component called student satisfaction survey why student satisfaction survey is important is that it is the whole education process one of the important stakeholders of an education process are the students so their actual learning experience in an in, in an institution is of importance that is student satisfaction is an important aspect of a learning teaching learning process or an institution's very existence that is why this is a direct indicator of effectiveness of teaching learning in the institution uh, it may be impractical to capture that so every however every can resort to a sample survey on formalized basis to capture about hand in your institution minimum about 100 students or 10% of the students and is what is required this uh, statistical details you can read in the manual uh, so this is student satisfaction survey is an important aspect it is available on the website i also have a format which if required can be seen but i suggest you see in the website uh, so that we don't exceed the time limit uh, it is available in the nac website it has you can always browse through that next uh, next uh, slide please uh, these are the distribution of uh, affiliated and consi you can see that criteria is 7 indicators 32 36 which i said it's totally uh, it's totally this is the old one this is the new one it is totally 55 hope uh, that is clear uh, can you open this distribution of weightage across indicators you have to go to the uh, you have to minimize this presentation and go to the uh, first uh, uh, first uh, uh, download and then open it you cannot open it from there because the hyperlink could have not uh, could have got uh, you you have to you have to minimize this sir minimize and go to the first uh, uh, first slide you open the initial one from where you are uh, a distribution of key indicators now you look at it criterion one criteria curricular aspects is 100 key indicator one curricular planning and implementation as a weightage of 20 key indicator academic flexibility as a weightage of 30 key indicator curriculum enrichment 30 key indicator feedback system 20 so we add this 30 plus 20 30 20 so it comes to 100 so the curriculum aspects as a weightage of 100 whereas teaching learning and evaluation as a total weightage of 3 350 that is student enrollment and profile 40 student teacher ratio 40 teaching learning these are all key indicators under teaching learning you see all this prof, all this weightages will add up to 350 and under each of this student enrollment and profile you have quantitative and qualitative metrics and each of this metrics has their specific weightages that i will show it to you little later so you can run through this it is same you can run through this this is available on the website and you can see that e it carries differential weightage the idea that it carries differential weightage is important now i was talking about you can still further go down see institutional values and social responsibilities carries a weightage of 50 so it's very important compared to say a, a somebody strategic development deployment which carries only a total weightage of 10 so there is a hierarchy of uh, questions where some have more weightages and some have less weightages so when you start preparing for uh, preparing the ssr it is important that you concentrate on uh, questions or metrics which has 
higher weightage and then come to lower weightages because sometimes it so happens you may be spending lot of time which has a very low weightage but very little time where the weightages are higher and in subsequently when you submit an iaqa and try to push things you will end up with a lot of confusion uh, uh, confusion and uh, uh, in, in fact leading to frustrations these are what i have seen in many where they rush through in the last moment and create lot of confusion and fr even frustration among the uh, members who are doing the work so back to uh, the presentation please go back to the presentation Now we can go to the next slide, please. Next slide. And this is how the institutional grading is. If you get a CGP, a grade point, a cumulative grade point as of above 3.51 to 4, you get A++, 3.26 to 3.5, A+. Plus. More for auton to get autonomy, I think you should be in the A+, plus range uh, of accreditation. That is the present policy uh, for obtaining autonomy. Next slide, please. And institutional information for quality assessment. These are the online submission. You, are, you have university, you have colleges for each cycle. This is available on the website. I think the next uh, uh, presenter or uh, Dr. Rawat, I think is uh, making presentation on this. Uh, they will be, uh, I think she will expand on this. So it is letter of intent was the earlier, uh, earlier name given to it was letter of intent. Now it has been converted into institutional eligibility, IIQA, institutional information for quality assessment. Institutional uh, information for is uh, wrongly mentioned here. Information for quality assessment. Next, uh, next slide, please. These are the manuals. I don't think I will uh, open the manual. Again, if required this, he has to go back and open. At this point, I think I will not open the manual. This is the latest manual as on 27522, uh, which has been uploaded on the NAC website. This is the latest manuals. It is available. You can look at it separately. Otherwise, it will take a lot of time. As seen in the report, uh, it, it, it has criteria and questions with weightages, which I will show in the next two samples so that weight every cry, every matrix has a weightage that you, you can keep in mind. Next, next slide, please. Now, the important part is each one extended profile. I've shown you what an extension profile is. Then extended profile has a template. Then affiliated constraint colleges also have a template that is for uh, the QI, QIF, QIF, that is matrix. Each matrix has a template, of particularly the quantitative ones. Then SOP, SOP standard operating procedure. This part I will talk in uh, DVV. Uh, during the DVV part and uh, I request Ashish that this has to be open when uh, I make the DVV presentation. So you remember the SOP has to be open. You have to come back to this, uh, the first slide of this presentation and open SOP later when I do the DVV presentation. Then AQR are all annual quality assurance reports which you have to submit. Uh, this is not applicable for first cycle institutions. All other institutions have to submit AQR regularly. There are formats for AQR and this is also being revised. Kindly keep track of it in NAC website. So this also has to be, I think by uh, December end, uh, you have to, I, I'm just not able to recollect the, uh, the dates for this, which is available on the NAC website. Next slide, please. And this is the data requirement of the cell study, which I've already showed it to you. It contains executive summary. It contains profile of the college, quality indicators, which I saw you, data templates and documents, qualitative and quantitative. 
this is the framework this i showed you already the report i have showed you so i think this concept should be clear by now next uh, next slide next slide please Okay, quantitative and qualitative metrics. That is the paradigm shift. I've already uh, talked about it. Online student survey. I've told you about it. Standard operating for DVV. We are talking about it in the next uh, next uh, next presentation. Then pre qualifier. I've talked about it. That is thirty percent. So this is the paradigm shift from the earlier system to this. Qualitative metrics, quantitative metrics. Qualitative metrics is. Uh, Uh, value evaluated by the peer team and quantitative metrics by the uh, uh, data that is provided by you and through a program which has been designed for that an online student survey part of teaching uh, uh, the second criteria uh, guidelines are also available in the website and it is also been it is also there i don't think we need to project it you can go through it or it is available uh, here you can also have a look at it in the website of nac next slide next slide please extract of qualitative and quantitative types of quantitative metrics it's important you have can uh, you give some uh, thought to this and also uh, give you more attention so that you will understand what exactly are types of quantitative metrics and as i said qualitative metrics this is example of a qualitative metrics this is curriculum aspects key indicator 1.3 and this institution integrate cost setting uh, cross setting issues etc see to the right see to the rest it's called qlm that means it indicates qualitative metrics and towards the right it has a weightage of 10 you understand it can carries weightage i have told you about it weightage is difference levels so curricular aspect in this curriculum enrichment 30 that and this question qlm question carries a weightage of 10 there could be other questions so that the total weightage will come to 30 for this particular key indicator so next slide please this is question type quantitative metrics student performance and learning outcomes is the key indicator it carries a weightage of 90 c average pass percentage of students current data and this carries a weightage of about 43 this could this weightage could revise could change depending on the more depend on the version they could change it a little so you could you should see the latest manual on weightage but the idea here is not a not just a, it is a, you have to uh, understand that the weightage is a differential now you say average pass percentage of student current year data see data as here is asked for current year that is the pre the year the last year of your data last year of your data that is that is the final year data of your process final year data or current year data that is the reference that is used now how is it calculated total number of iron students who passed the college to total number of final year students who appeared for examination this is the formula that is being used for this how do then and into 100 that percentage is calculated for this you don't have to worry about this formula it is only for the purpose of uh, uh, purpose of uh, uh, reference or purpose of giving an idea how the calculation happens this is given but as such you don't have to worry about it this when you say i showed you you remember about response the output of this formula is the response the output from this formula i showed you some response 93.4 etc the output of this formula will be the response then you have data templates etc uploading support documents minutes of the meetings etc etc are, are given in this the next slide please this is another type of quantitative metrics implementation in e governance areas see 1 2 3 4 and then the option of all the above any three of the above etc etc then it contains a weightage of uh, 
what are the documents requests screenshot of user interface e reflecting the name of the hi bills for expenditure on implementation of e governance in the area of operation all these have to be uploaded so this is the documentation required okay this is uh, the documentation you have to keep ready in case of confusions on what documentation etc we will discuss that a little on a little more on dvd next slide please scheme of operation of the process i'll just this is an example i have given this is an example created by me uh, and it not necessarily uh, the ranges i have used in this are used by nac it is just for the purpose of explanation i have created this quantitative this quantitative matrix even though the question exists in this in the manual and next slide please see this let us take this key key indicator feature profile and quality how is it explained it is explained or it is uh, captured through this question average percentage of full time teachers with phd dm mhd mm super specialty etc in the last phase consider only highest degree for count is okay so this is how this is phd uh, uh, phd dm etc etc number of full time teachers with phd dm etc into number of num divided number into 100 and and the next is percentage average percentages sigma of percentage per year by 5 and this is that response this is the formula this is the response this is how the response is calculated this formula part you need not worry about just to give you an understanding i will show you this in further detail next slide please uh, now faculty with psc this is the uh, structure where information is captured it is available on the question when in the uh, in the manual see here faculty with phd year and number 2019 20 32 this is a, this is an example i have just taken as an example this figures i have given from my uh, on my own 2018 43 2017 30 2016 17 26 2015 16 9 and full time faculty for the year and they from extended this is now i have this one see number of faculty 95 91 94 97 68 this is generally taken from the extended profile you saw that in the extended profile you saw teacher uh, uh, strength teacher strength uh, strength in the, in the boxes it is extended from full time faculty the denominator this denominator is taken from the extended profile extended profile which i showed you is the base document for you very important most of cross verifications will be done keeping the base uh, extended profile in view and extended profile also have templates and sops which we will discuss later now how is it the uh, formula applied see 2019 20 if you take it is 32 by 95 into 100 33.68 43 by 91 because here the faculty strength have changed yearly and number of phd's also have changed somebody has acquired phd etc etc so this is changing 43 by 49 30 by 94 etc when you add all this up average percentage when you add all this up and divided by 5 you get what is 30.56 this 30.56 is the response you get in this is the response which has been shown in the report that has that we discussed in the first first session this is 30.56 next slide please remember 30 point now this is the benchmark percentage of faculty with phd to total faculty this is you just remember this question also because i will make a reference to this question later now the matrix this 1 0 1 2 3 4 what i have said 0 is 1 to 10% 10 to 40 40 to 80 80 to 100 this is an imaginary range i have given for myself to help you understand how it is calculated and this is classified document this range is not available it is a classified document and this of information is only available with nac this information is not publicly displayed 
disclosed as of now. So now we said the last one they got some 35. So they get a grade point of 2. 1, 2, 3, 4 is the grade point. They got a grade point of 2. So it is 2 into the weightage for this is 20. So it is total 40. It's total 40 is the weightage for this. So you get for this the weightage. If you had got say 45% of a faculty were PhD holders, then it could be 3 into 20. That could be 60. And if it is 4, it could be 4 into 20. That could be 80. This is how your score on per weightage increases or decreases depending on how is this scoring made. Even in case of peer team members, looking at your answers, etc., they will they will guide. Okay, you will you are getting three here or four here. So your challenge is to see that you get the maximum of three and four and very little of one and two, so that even qualitative metrics is important so that the maximum three and fours you get, your scores improve and you may fall for, you at the bar, if you are borderline of something, if you score a little more here, instead of falling at A, you may fall into A++. Or if you are falling in B++, if you do well here, score well here, present well here, you may fall into one grade above. So it should, be, no, should not be ignored. There is a sense that PRT members you can ignore, you shouldn't ignore, but you should concentrate that. You should um, present it to the best extent possible without, I mean, exaggeration, but with careful thought so that you can get three and four maximums of three and four on the peer team visits. So that will increase your score. That will finally main, uh, result in increasing your grade. Next slide, please. Now, when I said, when you went to the, uh, I remember, I remember telling you, you read the last question. Full-time uh, faculty with full-time uh, uh, faculty with PhD. I said faculty with PhD. Full-time faculty with PhD. Now you must understand what is full-time teachers. What is full-time? You could have your own definition of what is full-time, etc. But NAC has a definition of full-time. This is given in glossary. A teacher employs for at least 90% of normal or statutory number of hours for a full-time teacher or a complete academic is clarified as a full-time teacher. He should be present for at least 90% of the normal statutory number of work, number of work, then he is considered a full-time teacher. It is not necessarily a permanent teacher. It is not full-time teacher here doesn't mean permanent teacher. This is the NAC definition. So glossary is important. We'll again discuss this a little further in gloss in the DVB process. Next slide, please. And this is the extract of a SOP. This is the metric 2.4.2, detailed PhD, etc. Document required for verification. We have you see this list of faculties having in net qualifications, etc. etc. Specific instruction mention number of full-time teachers with highest degree perspective and only other uh, post doctoral shall be as during DVV clarification state mm, and any other post doctoral degree of selected faculty where use of certificate should be provided as per each academic session provisional degree certificate may be considered whenever degree certificate is not available then honorary doctorate is not to be included this is the sop what is this sop i will we will discuss in the dvv presentation so each criteria will have an SOP, particularly the quantitative criteria. Each one will have an SOP. You have to refer to glossary. You have to refer to SOP while you do your start your preparation of uh, self-study report. And all these documents needs to be uploaded so that you don't have to answer too many questions from DVV because DVV, uh, the scope of DVV presentation We'll discuss literature and it's very limited. So next, next slide, please. General guidelines for HA relevant original documents signed by concerned authorities, etc., is available on the website. You please look at these things because these are all important. And also, when you finish your, when you complete your draft, uh, draft report, at that time it is better if you 
cross check all these issues now it is too premature to talk about it but you can always make notes of this and circulate among yourselves next slide please Assessment outcomes. When you finish your assessment, there is part one, which is a peer team report. Then there's a overall analysis. Then recommendations for quality enhancement of the institution. This is a post accreditation. After the accreditation is over, it uh, when they, when you get the results, it is available. You can see this also on the uh, website of other colleges. I I only upload. I only showed you uh, the peer team report of a college. but you can also see the peer team you can i only showed you the ssr of the college you can also show see the peer team report of the college so that you understand how a peer team has looked at various aspects of the uh, of an institution next slide please and this is graphical representation again based on the quantitative matrix If there is a graphical representation this will help you in some comparative analysis if you want to make comparative analysis this graphical representations of other institutions can be used for arithmetic purposes there is an arithmetic to this process you can use it for arithmetic purposes to cal to understand where you possibly may stand in this cycle in uh, after you complete your uh, 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 self study report that could help the graphical representations could help you uh, in uh, understanding that and also the responses that has been given of other institutions can also help you in that area next slide please and these are the areas what are learning outcome somebody asked me a question glossary and notes important peer team visit schedule for a college it will be as of now it is for uh, two days in that one day will be the visits one one and off days technically the visits will be for one and off days and as of now only the uh, league uh, only as per the norms of nac only 50% of the departments needs to be visited in an institution even though all departments needs to keep it ready 50% of the uh, departments needs to be uh, be evaluated or visited by the peer team in that 50% 25% of the departments has to be selected by the peer team and another 25% has to be selected by the college this and you can discuss these issues more before you uh, before uh, the peer team visit is scheduled for you because there are certain hints and tips which you can use before a peer team visit and that is we call it as what is called as mock mock peer team visit my suggestion is that institutions before going for the peer team visit quite in advance maybe 10 15 days in advance uh, should in my opinion do a mock visit as far as possible physically because there are two aspects to mock visit one aspect is the presentation its continuity the way it is presented etc which can which can be reviewed by peer team members outside the institution or that uh, the and uh, there are ways to present it etc which could be advantages to the institution so you, i could i could prescribe a mock visit before the final visit uh, before actual pf team visit happens two days etc you will have that learning outcome somebody asked about it it is other issues and it is also available in the nac website uh, you can uh, see that download it see that etc is all possible next uh, and declaration is important because in the declaration you say that you have submitted the report from uh, iiqa that uh, question appears in the iiqa that you have submitted your iiqa itself from a from a computer which in your within your institution and we ask for its ip i ip details okay ip number code you have to give for the uh, computer from which you have uploaded it ip address sorry ip address has to be given so you have to be uh, careful on that it uh, because don't uh, try uh, 
for whatever reason try to submit your iaqa from outside the institution nor the ssr next slide please these are some of the notifications you can see notification of pharmacy college is just that uh, the, the same manual applies to pharmacy colleges because health sign manual don't apply to them i don't know if any pharmacy college is there if the pharmacy college is there you have to use the same manual next slide the notifications are available and this you can skip my advice on this is don't plan well before you start your preparation of ssr report because if you don't plan well you will spend a lot of time on this and it will be it will be confusion there will be chaos and uh, frustration during the com completion of the process so plan well and in fact this is a, a what a extract of a convocation address which was given by cv raman in bhu in uh, during his times 19 at uh, 26 i think this is you can read for yourself so that we have to keep our uh, non academic functions to the minimum the time allocated to the non academic functions in the sense preparation of a i am not saying non academic functions means it is not important i am not saying that but we should do it in a minimal amount of time so that highest function is stimulate intellect advanced knowledge this is our highest purpose so you can just go to the next slide uh, it indicates the name of when professor c v norman said this in a convocation address at bhu speech delivered at convo bhu 1926 this is what he said in 1926 i think we need to evaluate this is not part of nac uh, but etc yes, it is about time management etc so we have to really uh, look at this observation of a very senior academician and the nobel laureate of our country next slide please and is a paradox that simplicity comes from passing through many complex stages of learning this means unless you are able to simplify the process you don't understand the process enough you should be able to simplify the process and understand the process in a, as simple a way as possible if you are not able to simplify the process it really means you have not put enough effort to understand the process you are getting into complexities in the process you have to go through repeat that's why i have given you many things many hints don't directly take a self study report and start filling it it will not help you in that sense because then again the understanding process becomes complex if the understanding process is is uh, is taken care of the simplicity of the process will be will be seen in the preparation of the cell study report next slide please and uh, observations questions maybe we will park it to the uh, next presentation dvv presentation i'll continue with the dv presentation and then we will do with the uh, we will go to the uh, question answer session the remaining part of the session we will do the question answers i hope it is okay with uh, Uh, Dr. Gitanjali Mahendra, Madam Manda, uh, Dr. Yes, Anupama sir. Tandon. Uh, okay, yes, please. Sir, we'll we go have, to the deep. Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry for interrupting, sir. Sir, we have our next uh, speaker at two uh, thirty. So, what? How much time I have? Ah, uh, uh, sir, um, you can have. Almost, yes, Dr. Gitanjali. Actually, it is already two uh, thirty. Doctor, can we extend the time? At least another fifteen minutes, I could uh, round it up. Is it possible, uh, or it is? Ah, uh, sir, yes. If you can um, take uh, finish it in maybe seven eight minutes. I can finish it, but question answers. Uh, uh, you have, you have a session later. Uh, yes, sir. If we if we have time, uh, we can gather the questions. Maybe we can forward the questions to you through mail. The important ones later. Okay, the, I will try to complete it another five minutes. The next presentation. Yes. Can you put yes. on the next presentation, please?
Okay, get, go to the first slide. First slide. So this is the session on data validation and uh, DVB. What exactly, why is this process there is? It is simply because you, there are three participants in this process. One is the institution, that is you, NAC, and the uh, partner agencies who verifies the data. So there has to be a common understanding between you, between NAC, and the agencies so that they evaluate it right. Like, for example, PhD questions I took. Say for PhD, they, uh, they, uh, in the format, you will be asked certain details. You cannot keep on asking details. Like the DVV partner cannot keep on asking, okay, PhD from this university, whether this university is recognized. He cannot keep on asking you questions. So there is a com common understanding between you, the institution, and uh, the partner. This common understanding is referred to in the SOP, that is standard operating procedures. When you look at standard operating procedures, all the commonalities will be addressed. What is the, this is the, so SOP simply means the common understanding between you, the institution, and the partner. That is what it is. That is SOP. And I have shown you an example of SOP. You can see examples of SOP for all metrics. And it is self-explanatory. I really don't have to go into that. Next slide, please. Why is this done? Because the process is, it's all evidence-based. Because there is no direct interaction between you and I. It's all evidence. If you say 100% is my past percentage, you have to show the student all the 100 students who appeared and all the list of all the 100 students you passed. So it is an evidence-based process. So everything for everything, you have to show evidence. You have to show photographic evidences for many things. Uh, then you have to, uh, what is that? Uh, if you are doing, uh, uh, so they're asking for uh, 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 photos with uh, latitude and longitudes, etc. Then, then it is all data rigorous. The process is very uh, data rigorous. So you have to be collect your data carefully. Next. Because that only one point I want to add here is DVV gives you only one opportunity for uh, clarification they have sought. Afterwards, they will not. Only one opportunity, then the decision is taken. So you have to be very, uh, we have to collect your data well right away. Then the process, once the cell study is report, Received, it is assigned to an officer, then assignment to pre-identified partners for verification on random basis. This is once the SSR is received on a random basis, it is assigned to uh, uh, partners. There are about four or five partners. Then clarification from the institution, the partner, the DVV partners will ask for clarification. You need to give clarification. Once the clarification is received, there will be internal review and finalization that the validation that this is the final score for that matrix for for this institution this is the finalization so the in between there's an internal review inside NAC. once uh, the dvb gives their report it is internally reviewed and nac officers and their nac team gives their view on that and then it is finalized or freezed so this is one next slide please then key requirements are talked about its glossary, standard operating procedures, respective type of aid, already accepted SSR reports available. This is your aid. You don't, there is no right or wrong answers. You have to see many answers and depending on your data, conclude that. Next slide, please. Next slide. Thanks for your patient sharing. This is the DVV is a, very short process. In fact, I had covered parts of DBV in my earlier presentation. Uh, if the organizers are okay with, you can, one or two questions can be taken or I can uh, uh, stop the presentation here. And uh, yes, for, sir. I'm looking yes, for sir. advice yes. on this matter. I suppose sir, the questions would be forwarded to you as and when they come. And okay. uh, we will be very grateful to you for answering those questions. Uh, we are extremely thankful to Sir and Dr. B.S. Madhukar for sharing relevant information related to validation and verification process. 
sir you have given us important pointers to focus on during the accreditation process we will consider and implement whatever you have prescribed to us once okay. again we are extremely grateful to you sir okay one point i wish to make uh, uh, the disclosure that i this presentation i am making from london and i am not in india now so that my phones or the, my regular phone uh, cell phone is not working in case you want to talk to me any of the participants you can send an email or you can do a uh, uh, whatsapp call but thank you very much for the opportunity i wish to uh, send be beats college simla very well and all the participants all the best and wherever if you require some uh, some uh, more advice or some insights you are free to contact me and it's not a it's not a compulsory issue you can feel if you feel you can contact me thank you very much and i thank all the faculty members and dr geetanjali uh, for uh, chairing this session thank you very much yes thank, thank you, you so much we will definitely get back to you we will uh, definitely yes. get back to you sir you have joined us all the way from london we are so grateful to you for that and uh, we will be sharing your email uh, with uh, the rest of the participants so that we can take more insights from you thank you so much sir and uh, i'm sure we will have some clarifications also to make we will be uh, bothering you with those as well so i'm so 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 grateful to you for that offer that you have made thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you and i'm grateful to dr alok for uh, uh, suggesting your name and uh, you took out time from your busy schedule especially from london to you know speak with the participants i'm so grateful to dr alok and to you sir thank you so uh, much also my thanks to dr alok thank you very much uh thank you dr gitanjali for chairing the session uh we have now uh, uh dr surya rashmi rawat uh and uh, dr sapna will uh, chair the session uh, over to you dr sapna yeah thank you anupama uh welcome ma'am surya rashmi ma'am welcome so good afternoon everyone i extend a very warm welcome to all of you to this fourth technical session of uh, next sponsored one day webinar on revised accreditation and assessment framework in higher educational institutions organized by iqac st beans college shimla for this technical session of the webinar we are honored to have among us dr surya rashmi rawat deputy coordinator iqac himachal pradesh university she will take us to the journey of preparation of iiqa that is institutional information for quality assessment and will help us to know whether we are accreditation ready or not it's my pleasure to introduce dr surya rashmi rawat she is an associate professor in mba department of university business school himachal pradesh university and has a teaching experience of more than 18 years currently she is deputy director iqac she is member of many committees of university like examination reform committee research and innovation committee curriculum development committee etc before joining himachal pradesh university in 2021 she was serving as associate professor at symbiosis law school pune and symbiosis law school uh, noida there also she has held many academic and administrative positions she was a member of board of studies academic audit committee nac steering committee etc her research areas include management science marketing and human resource management and was involved with multiple research projects both at international and national level she has published papers in many reputed international and national journals ma'am we welcome you and are delighted to have you with us this afternoon i'm sure that through your wide experiences and knowledge the faculty members will get some beautiful and unique ideas to get ready and work for nac so with this i hand over the mic to dr surya rashmi ji uh, thank you so much ma'am for those beautiful words uh, am i audible that's my first question yeah yeah yes yes you are okay perfect uh, uh, can you see my screen <clears throat> yes we can wonderful so good afternoon everybody 
uh, the principal of the college and uh, IKSC coordinator, dear colleagues. Um, it's actually a pleasure to interact with young people like you. So I have been, you know, my topic is how do you prepare IIQA? So it's always good to connect. So we all know everybody is talking about NAC and uh, why NAC basically. So basically it's about making quality and defining this element in the higher education. That's the basic focus. And what are those areas? Where are we going to work? The quality evaluation, promotion and sustenance initiatives, right? And then what is the mission of NAC? Of course, it is it, it, it when you are looking on to enhance the quality, right? The best way is take a test, right? Take a test. And that's why this periodic assessment is mandatory part parcel of NAC to stimulate the academic environment, encourage self-evaluation, quality related research, consultancy, and very, very important is to collaborate with the other stakeholders. So <clears throat> now when you talk about the core values of NAC, See, this is something which, of course, you can connect with the new educational, uh, the national education policy also. It says by the, the basic core value of NAC is to contribute to the national development, number one, fostering the global competencies among the students, thereafter value systems among the students, promoting use of technology and quest of excellence. Why I, I am uh, focusing on this is because all these things, they got to be mentioned, they got to be highlighted somewhere or the other. These words, words must resonate in your SSR, right? The seven criterions are there and somewhere, you know, all these words, they must resonate, they must appear. So not talking much about all this because since morning you people are having a discussion on this straight away come to the process of assessment and accreditation and this is what I am supposed to cover. So as you may see <clears throat> when you talk about a NAC assessment and accreditation the first stepping stone is your IIQA right and then there is another zero step also. So what is that zero step? Zero is the AQARs that you people are filling annually. Right. So the basic groundwork of this assessment process starts annually. So when you are filling those AQARs annually, you are actually every day you are trying to, you know, gradually you are inching towards this, the final grade. So AQAR are very, very important that we all must understand. Right. So if you are not filling your AQAR reports properly, you can never reach here. So this is something we all must understand before I start my presentation. So people, the step zero is AQAR. We got to fill every detail in the AQAR very, very carefully because and once you very carefully filled up details in the AQAR and then when you collected all the data also carefully, what happens is this becomes very, very easy, right? This SSR, the self-study report, it becomes very, very easy. Now, <clears throat> let's come to the point, which is IIQA. Uh, it is the Institutional Information for Quality Assessment. So every year you are preparing AQAR right once you are due for that you know five years or seven years so congratulations first of all i'm so glad i'm interacting with one of the finest of the institutions in the country right you got that assessment period for seven years so it speaks volumes you know a plus uh, grade you people have got so that's really wonderful so we see <clears throat> Whether you got it for seven years, but ultimately data you're going to fill in is for the last five years. Now this IIQA when we fill, right? This is the ticket basically for reaching here. So step zero is AQAR, which is filled annually. At the end of fifth year, when one, once we filed our AQR thereafter, we are eligible to fill up this IIQA, right? Now this institutional information for quality assessment just to give you brief of this entire process, which I'm sure somebody must have discussed in the morning session. We see this IIQA when we fill, this is sort of a summary. If this IIQA gets accepted, then it opens the gateway to this grade. But then unfortunately, if the IIQA gets rejected, right? If the IIQA gets rejected, NAC is really generous 
gives party two more attempts to fill in that IIQA. Now, what is important for us to learn is that when you submit your IIQA, it's not just like submitting any document. There's a fees which is associated with it, right? There's a fees which is associated with it. And then you have to, uh, you know, the GST is also applicable to it, right? So uh, that amount, once we've submitted IIQA, the fees has to be submitted. And in that one fee, an institution is eligible to apply for IIQA. Means one straight away, first time you submit, gets accepted, wonderful. Unfortunately, the IIQA gets rejected, right? In the same fee, you get two more attempts, right? In the same fee, you get two more attempts within a year. If somebody is very, very unfortunate, and let's say, Twice you, you know, the first time you submitted the IIQ, second time gets rejected, third time also gets rejected. Thereafter, if some institution has to go in for the IIQ once again means now this fourth time you will have to apply with the fresh fee. Right. Definitely, this is not something which is going to happen to you. But since I'm supposed to talk about IIQ, so I thought let me clarify this also. Now, uh, thereafter, once the IIQA has been accepted, people, the next step is the self-study report, which has to be submitted. And now we all know that everything, all the submissions, they have to happen online. So your institution, you already have registered yourself. So in the NAC, uh, NAC portal, you uh, uh, in somebody, let's say somebody is a first timer, then the registration process has to start first of all. But in your case, you are already a registered institution. All you have to do is this SSR now you are going to submit online in the NAC portal. Now, there's one thing very important for all of us to understand here. Once you've submitted your IIQA and it gets accepted, thereafter you get 45 days only for the submission of SSR, the self-study report, right? What, what is the time limit? You just get 45 days for the submission of this SSR, right? So what does that mean? That simply means before you file your IIQA, your SSR either you should be ready, right? So means this is not your step number two. Right. So I said zero is your AQAR. So this is zero one. Before you submit your IIQA, actually the SSR should be all prepared. Everything should be there. The entire data should be there. The document should be there so that you don't have any stress. Right. And you are able to thoughtfully, you know, come up with the entire stuff that you people had been working for the past five years. So please remember that. You should not be in a hurry to submit the IIQ, right? Close your SSR first. Thereafter, start thinking of submitting the IIQA. Once your SSR is done, right? So, of course, you know, later on the makeup can be done. The face lifting can be done. Thoda sa lipstick laga do, thoda sa bindi laga do. That is all right. But you can't be starting with the scratch, you know. Therefore, A QAR is zero. This is zero one <clears throat> SSR. Once this is done, now you say, okay, my IIQA is done. My SSR is done. Let me go and submit my IIQA because the day this is going to be accepted, thereafter the reaction time is less. You just get 45 days. And if your SSR is already prepared, you can utilize these 45 days for further enhancing the quality of the content and also the evidences, the supporting evidences that, that are there. And then this DVP process. It is going to be a very easy, uh, you know, sort of cake walk for you. So we see this self study report. You get 45 days time uh, post the acceptance of IIQA. Now, once this is done, what is next? So once we've submitted the SSR, two things are parallel going to happen. One is the student satisfaction survey, and uh, I'm sure somebody is going to talk about this. And then second is the data validation and verification process. So once, so this is 45 days, within 45 days, this has to be submitted. Thereafter, this process starts and if everything goes well, your student satisfaction survey is nicely taken care of. Your DBB process generally gets finished within 30 days. If there are issues with the student satisfaction survey, it might take a little more, right? So we see you have to take care of your students because these 10 percent marks are really really important and thereafter there's going to also affect the dbv process so they wait for this thing to over get over right so when this data validation and verification process is done and thereafter we see the system generated score comes out 
on the basis of the DVB. So if this system generated score is um, at least, you know, it should you have to score at least 30 percent here. So if you get that 30 percent of system generated score, we say, OK, you qualified, right? You qualified. So this is the pre qualifier, which is mandatory. So the first of first exam, you know, this was your first exam, right? So it's basically formative assessment. OK, so first of all, IIQA has to be accepted. Thereafter, the student satisfaction, you have to perform well. And then in through this DVB process, you must score at least 30 percent. Once this is done, we say you pass. And in uh, just in case the institutions are not able to get this 30 percent, then we say you are failed right now. People when IIQA was rejected, in the same fee, the institution has the that uh, option to apply two more times within a year. But in this case, people, um, if you get rejected here, right, you'll have to apply again with the IIQA fresh and payment of all the fee. So that's why it's very important that this SSR is nicely prepared before you enter into IIQA stuff, right? Because from here, there's no U-turn. It's only, you know, uh, of course, there is a U-turn only. <laughs> so if you fail the pre-qualifier, there's going to be an absolute U-turn. You reach from here. So it's like saap seedi ki tarah hai. Saap aapko kha gaya and you finally go back here, right? After se zero mein a gaya, it's going to be like that. So you apply, you'll have to apply again with the fresh IIQA number one. And this is also going to affect the financial burden. So financial burden is all right. Your efforts, they are going to be wasted. Most important is that does that's not going to carry a very good impression about the institution. So they'll say, OK, they are the ones whose IIQA got rejected. So it is people something like, you know, when you check the fresh papers, you always uh, your mindset, your attitude is OK. They are nice people. The nice students are good. Evaluate them well. When the compartment paper comes to you, right? Somewhere you feel OK, ye compartment wale log hai, right? So the, the your way of looking at those papers is not the same as you look at the fresh paper. That's exactly the kind of treatment the institutions are going to get who unfortunately fail and apply for IIQA again, right? So the first impression is going to be really, really bad. Maybe you performed very well in the SSR, but still, you know, that 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 bad impression is going to stay. Now, <clears throat> once you've passed, right? So see now further what's going to happen. So pre-qualifier round, you did good. Thereafter, this 70% uh, online, the whatever, whatever marks you've got plus, the peer team visit, right? Peer team visit, they are going to. So we have two types of data. I'm sure that has also been explained. Quantitative data is 70% and qualitative data is only 30%. So this peer team, within the 90 days, they are going to come and they are going to go through this qualitative data. They will assess you for the 30% of the total score, whereas the quantitative data gets you 70%. And this team is going to judge you, right? Without you knowing who is the assessor and without they knowing who is the party. Right. Therefore, people, we have to ensure that our data are really good. You are not going to get an opportunity to defend for the substance that you're offering. Therefore, it's very, very important that with respect to not just the quantitative, of course, qualitative also, the data and the documentation has to be excellent. But specifically for this quantitative stuff, you are not going to get an opportunity to defend. That's why everything has got to be very clear. Specifically, the proofs that you are offering make the flow charts. The presentation is something which is going to be really important, right? And thereafter, so the sum of these two is going to finally get you the grade. And we all know people, NAC grades, they are really, really important nowadays, right? So what is the grade that your institution is getting? It is not just going to build the brand. Right. In addition to the brand, the funds that are going to come to you from the UGC or from the state, right? That's straight away going to that is straight away connected with this. The foreign collaborations that are going to happen in the future straight away are going to be connected with the grades. Any institution that has C grade, B grade, who is going to be interested? The foreign partners are never going to be interested with them, right? Anybody would love to partner with St. Beats because they are A plus, right? So we see. 
if you are interested uh, that the foreign partners they should come and collaborate with if you are interested that more funds they should come to you if you are interested that you should get good admissions right quality students they come to you then it's very very important that every it's not it's not that one shot affair it's not that at the end of fifth year you are going to work every day you will have to work right any event that happens uh, uh, do see, see keep the all the data that are there related to that event pilot right it's so very easy so every day you have to score one run so that at the, at the end of the five year you get a decent grade right so i believe this is clear to you all now i've already explained this yeah the, this one point i would like to talk about here so now um, the dear audience i said 45 days within 45 days we have to submit the ssr right but then um there is an option you know just in case there's some some reason which is actually a genuine reason you might get an extension for 15 days but don't just bank on that right during covid times people were really fortunate this extension it went on to 30 days 60 days or maybe 6 months in certain cases but this benefit is not going to come to you at all right it's simply not going to come to you at all because what is the what does the manual says manual says that um, this extension this extension is only allowed where there's a natural calamity a flood right or some payment settlement delay or the technical problem for a period up to maximum of 15 days only so in this natural calamity they never thought you know they never thought something like corona will come but you are definitely not going to get this credit so maximum thing that you may get is 15 but you forget about this just think that 45 days is all that you have in your hand so there is no further extension this is very very important for you all to understand if you are not able to submit your ssr by 45 days right within this time period of 45 days what will happen you will have to apply a fresh a fresh iqa will have to be submitted and fresh iqa means with the additional fees with the additional fees right so higher education they have to come a fresh by submit iqa with the requisite fees so kitna efforts aap pehle dal chuke hain wapas se aap zero mein wo saap seedi ke game mein fir se zero mein chale jayenge to wo wala acha lagta hai saap seedi khelna okay try this option but otherwise just don't consider this 15 days if they exist or not for you it should be 40 days and like i said prepare your ssr there after think of iqa so now the registration process we all know who are applying for this um yours is which cycle is yours anupma ma'am or sapna uh, madam sapna is there i think yes ma'am this is our fourth ma cycle yes ma'am so that's your fourth cycle wonderful wonderful yeah. so in that case you are already registered right so you are already registered so we said you will be using the old credentials only which were used for your earlier letter of intent and not to say only just in case you forgotten the password there's always an option for resetting the password also right so while you uh, so this is the kind of screen that appears anupma ma'am you can try this hands on maybe log in and uh, you can check all the stuff so uh, as we log in as we log in right this is the screen that's going to appear so all you have to do is you will be visiting the nac website and there uh, you fill in your details the login and the password this captcha comes and thereafter if you have forgotten something the forgot password option is also there somebody who is starting the registration for the first time this is the place wherein they have to click but this is not applicable to you all you have to do is just fill in the details you know login and your password and post captcha and this is how uh, you will be uh, you will see this kind of a window this is the dashboard right once you log in people this is the dashboard that appears and these are the entries that you see right these are the entries that you see this is the home page which we can see here in it it's going to give you the details as to which cycle it is the they talk about the important dates they talk about the alerts and notifications and uh, if you are interacting with them some some queries pending and all all the stuff they appear here so there is this tab manage iiqa right we have this tab manage iiqa this is what now we are going to work on so this uh, after login says this is this so how to now okay let me show you this also but not a big thing 
anupma ma'am i think uh, you can change the password right so just in case you want to change the password it is always advisable that first timers when they are registering they must immediately change the password right so you can see the screen this gives you the option for change password right so if you want to change password so first timer somebody is registering you must change the password okay sorry there's a question there's a question okay so we have changed the password not talking much about it now people on the left hand side of the screen all these things they appear my screenshot maybe things were not very clear so anupma ma'am parallel she can check the she can actually open and uh, log in and thereafter she can verify all these things so people these are the options that you see towards the left hand side right all these things you see here so you have manage iqa which we are now going to concentrate upon so it has the prepare iqa it has make payment it has submit iqa view iqa the clarifications assessment history and assessment time right so first of all we are going to work on this the manage iqa right so we see when you say manage iqa right this is this is the screen that's going to be displayed as you write down manage iqa as you click on manage iqa this is the screen that appears and on the screen you have 1 2 3 4 5 tabs displaying first is the basic eligibility second talks about the affiliation compliance third talks about profile information and the next one talks about the academic information that you have and last one is the quality information right so now we are trying to now we've already started how are you going to now prepare your iq we are on that so <clears throat> what did you do this prepare iq and these are the tabs that they come so now one by one we are going to click each of these tabs and fill the information now all of you i would like to draw your attention on this tab here the view iqa compliance right it's very important for all of us to continuously monitor this view iqa compliance so view filled in details this also you can do so it's like you fill in the data and thereafter check what you filled and very important is you must check the view iqa compliance to be just in case there's something uh, let's say you're not eligible or there's some mistake that has come some warning would come out error or warning something of sort all those can be monitored from this tab which is view iqa compliance so whenever you'll be filling this please this is an important uh, option which you must monitor before you click that submit button very important you know though very very petty thing but then i must tell you so whatever information you filled in immediately the next thing would be to save right save and next so one smart act is straight away switch over but the better idea is you you click this save and next so that gradually you move in it's very important to press the save tab continuously you don't save nothing is going to be saved right so now what's the information in the basic eligibility that comes out so it says the cycle whichever this is automatically going to come because you've already registered the name of higher education comes here city comes here the state or the ut and then date of establishment of the institution right date of establishment so if you remember precisely the day the month and the date going for this and just in case uh, there's a confusion and you don't remember exactly the um, date or and the month and but you remember that okay 1904 is when we started so just write 1904 you have that option also right you have both the options either you exactly write down the date so 4th april 1904 and if you don't remember and if you don't have those documents also in your hand then it's always safer to just write down the year right and then year of graduation now this is very very important because when you talk about the eligibility for somebody to file the iqa or apply for the nac accreditation it's very important that at least two batches they have passed out one second is it's been six years it's been six years from your existence so either of these two conditions are mandatory and therefore here what we write down the last two batches that have graduated from our institution so we are going to mention here the details of the last two batches that have graduated once we filled in all these details then we are going to click this save and next right so <clears throat> um, so this is what i just explained you 
Now, here we further move on. Basic eligibility may further, uh, we've done this. Like I was talking to you about the IIQA compliance. So once you've filled it, it's always safer to click here, view IIQA compliance. So once you do that, if there is some mistake, it's going to give you a warning. It will say some error or it will say some warning with respect to anything. Right. So before you submit, it's very important to go through this IQ conference so that you exactly are aware as to if there's something wrong, you are going to immediately plug that. Right. So um, this is what I just told you. Now I told you this also at least six years of existence or at least two badges passed out. These two conditions, they, this makes the basic eligibility for somebody to apply for IQ not applicable to you. You are like, you know, there since ages. So now affiliation compliance. So in this tab, what information do we do? This is very important now. Affiliations. Affiliations means with whom the affiliation. One of course is going to be the university. But in addition to that, here we talk about the uh, programs that you are running. Are you running some program which has the affiliation from the statutory regulatory bodies, right? So for example, some, some course in medicine, so Medical Council of India, some law degree you are running. So the Bar Council of India, B.Ed. or um, uh, the, the education degree or the sports degree, then the technical education degrees there. If you are running engineering course, then AICT is the statutory regulatory authority. Are you running any such program? Then all those details are required to be filled in here. So it says if higher education is offering any program recognized by SRA other than UGC. So you can't say this is um, UGC ka hai a program, right? In addition to UGC, it says, is there any other program which you are running, right? Which has been governed by the statutory regulatory authority, then that info has to be filled in under the affiliation compliance. So we may add SRA programs as they are applicable to us, right? So SRA program, so here, this is how the table is going to appear like. So see affiliation compliance, I have clicked. So once you click the affiliation compliance, so it says whether the college is affiliated. So in your case, of course, your college is affiliated. You say yes. Thereafter, it says name of the affiliating university and in which university is located. So um, the details of it. So you here you mention Himachal Pradesh and you write down the name of the university. Now, just in case the name of the university does not exist in the drop down, which is there, then that has given this option of inclusion of the university. Let's say there's some new university and uh, duly recognized as everything, but Let's say it's not there in the drop down. So you make a request request for inclusion again, not applicable to you because your university is already there. Now here we say this is the important question here for the affiliation compliance. It says either affiliated by some university or some SRA. So is the college offering programs recognized by the statutory regulatory authorities other than UGC? That's important. So you say yes. If you say you are going to say yes only and only if you have the courses that are being governed by say AICTE or by the Bar Council of India, etc, etc. Right. So you said if the moment you say yes, then you will have to upload the documents here. So let's say, um, by the way, do you have any course, any program uh, which is being governed by the statutory regulatory authority? Ma'am, we are affiliated to HP University only, I think. We don't run mm -hmm. any other course. Achha, and we just have are... JBT course. That's it. You have JBT. And which body governs yeah. JBT? Uh, HP board. Okay, fine. So that's all right then. So just in case, you know, later on, if you would like to have any course run by the statutory regulatory authority, then only this is applicable in your so that it is like either or either affiliated to any, uh, some university or the course being offered by the SRA. So if that's not there, then it's perfectly all right. We are sorted then. Otherwise, we are supposed to upload the approvals from the SRA here, right? So we move further. So this is again, it is showing that uh, uh, by you search for your university, HIMU type and the this drop down is going to come from where you're going to search Himachal Pradesh University, right? Here we see request to include university. Your case is not applicable because your university already appears there. Now it says um, if it is neither affiliated nor has SRA, then you are not, we say you are not eligible. 
right? Then we say you are not eligible. So ever we had three questions: one, two, and three. So uh, neither uh, your college is affiliated nor you have SRA, then you are not eligible. Either of these two conditions have to happen. And in your case, you are affiliated to HP University, so this one is sorted. So affiliation compliance you meet with. Thereafter, uh, next we move on to the profile information that is there. Now about the profile information, again, we have to be very careful here. In this case, we shall be talking about name of the head of the institution, right? And like it says, Mr. Doctor, whatever, and then the name designation you write down and then the function from the own, whether you run from your own campus or it's a mouth source, that information is what you're going to mention here. Thereafter, you give the details of your address, state, UT, city, etc., etc. Right, registered mobile number. Be very careful with this. Now, what happens because everything is going to bank on this, you have to be really careful while you mention the registered mobile number here, the email IDs, and the alternate email IDs. And we must, while we are in the process, we must ensure that we are always checking the e inbox of these two email IDs that we've mentioned here. Right. And let me also tell you people, every communication that comes from NAC, wonder why, but majority time it goes to your spam. Right. It goes to your spam. So if you are ever waiting for a communication to come to you from NAC office, must check your spam. Right. Must check your spam because wonder why, but the NAC means they generally um, they, they find that place very, you know, cozy. And um, generally you see they land up there in the <coughs> spam only. So alternate uh, faculty contact details. So maybe the here when you're talking about your director, here could come the details of your IQC coordinator. So designation address and the other details, state, UT, pin code, etc., etc. So we see now um, you have to give the link of your website. What is the nature of college, whether it's government, private, grant in aid, self-financing or the constituent one. Now in this institute, is the institution recognized under 2F? So 2F and 12B, if the institutions are recognized, we are going to say yes and accordingly, we have to upload the document. So like I said, before you uh, plan of working on IFUA, must collect all these documents in hand, right? There is a possibility. Um, I'm sure you people must have preserved all these documents. So just in case any of these documents, mandatory documents, you are not able to find out, write a letter to UGC and get hold of those documents, right? So you can always do that rather than cutting that sorry figure later on. At the preparatory stage itself, it's always a good idea to collect all your documents. So this, these two forms, 2F, 12B, uh, is something that you get from the uh, UGC, right? If you are in, the, uh, in that list. So now there's another document which I'm going to open here, which talks about your profile information. Uh, here I'm going to share again. Mm, yeah. Can you people see the PDF document? Is this PDF document visible? Madam Sapna? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You can see the PDF, right? Can you see the PDF? Yes, ma'am, we can. We can. Okay. okay. We can. So now the next very important thing is the profile. And in the profile, we see uh, we've already said that all these stuff they appear. This document, I'm sure either you people have, and if you don't have, I'm going to share this with you all. So after this, we move on to. Um, this just a second i'll have to take this call Yeah, sorry people, uh, there was this call which I could not afford to miss. And uh, not much is left actually now. 
so in the, 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 this is how we these are the details that you must keep handy and more than the details the required the associated documents you must keep with you right so i think now this is better here we go this is the screen again so is the institution recognized under 2f 12e if yes then you got to have the documents right you got to have that document uh, which your registrar must have received from the ugc and by by mistake if those stuff are not there with you please catch hold of them write a letter to ugc they are going to give you this recognized by some okay so is the institution recognized as college with the potential of excellence if applicable you need the document again right recognized as college of excellence by ugc so one is potential for excellence or college of excellence so do you fall in either of these categories sapna madam sorry college with potential for excellence you so are we have got this potential so if you are the college with potential please ensure that you have the document for this right so please look sure. for that document and if it is mm -hmm. not there right now immediately now you have to work on this write an uh, write an email and get it thereafter data of uploading now aisha is also increasingly become very very important and uh, very soon you know there's going to come an interface between aisha and uh, your nirf and the nac many of stuff it's going to be one entry and thereafter will be chilling right but till till such time that happens we have to feed the data in all those windows so we see date of uploading data on website of this um, aisha you all must know because annual you must be filing this aisha stuff also right so if the college is uh, after the certification by the head of institution for having complied with rules and regulation and other sra in the prescribed form right so you have to attach the certificate which your head of institution is going to sign keep that ready and now comes the question has the institution made statutory declaration on the institution website under section 41b of rti as issued yes or no now this is another very very important thing i'm sure you people have all these mandatory committees and cells just in case you do not have there is no escape you will have to constitute these different committees and in the iqa you just write down that these committees are there but then uh, in the nac you know students at uh, the self study report there we have to give the composition and also the minutes of meeting of these different cells and committees right so criterion 5 the team that's looking into criterion 5 they must be aware they must be looking at this so we see it this is very very important you must have a committee for scst a committee for minority cell grievance redressal committee the internal compliance committee and anti dragging committee obc cell so all or whichever you have right so all or whichever you have at least four you must have so you can't just stick it like i said where are where is this going to match criterion 5 in the criterion 5 they are not just going to look into the composition they will also be looking into the minutes of the meeting because you just can't say that there is a grievance redressal committee but then there is no meeting or, or you can't say that there is no grievance which came to us good grievance did not come still you have to meet still you have to meet and in the minutes you have to document the fact that there was no grievance right so orally you can't say since there was no grievance therefore we did not meet you have no option but to meet so internal complaints committee this is mandatory we all know this is uh, in pursuance of the sexual harassment act uh, the posh act also we know this as 2013 act right so this is also mandatory i'm sure you people have it if it's not there please constitute it and strictly go by the composition which is mentioned in the posh act for this again for this you need to have the mandatory meetings and when i say the meeting is there means the minutes got to be there anti dragging and all for this the members who are there in these different committees they should be displayed at various places in the institution also on the websites okay <laughs> next very important comes your academic information right in the stab only the next very important stuff that comes is the academic information wherein you are now going to talk about number of programs offered again people alert number of programs offered right so here this is the screen that's going to appear see academic information so number of programs offered if here 
against UG, I'm writing seven. So I'm going to get those seven options here. If here I'm going to, if I'm writing one, I'm going to get those one option only here. So there has to be a compatibility in what you are mentioning, the numbers that you are giving here and the details that are going to follow. So again, be very careful. So you should precisely know how many programs, UG programs are you offering? Write that number, two, three, four, five. How many PG programs are you running? Write the number just in case you do not have any PG program, just write zero. You have the diplomas, mention the number. Here we are only writing down the numbers. So the numbers you mention here, only those many tabs are going to open down. So if you say UG5, but in reality, you just have four programs that you offer, then that one empty blank is going to appear. Right. So again, that's not a good thing. So be very careful. So before you start filling, do not be in a hurry to fill the information. Right. Do not be in a hurry to fill the information. The entire data should be there right in front. So you see, OK, how many programs? Give me what are the programs? The BA is there, the BCom is there like this, you know. So PG, how many programs are there? Well, I mean, English is there. MSc Physics is there, MSc Chemistry. So I should know exactly the names of the programs and I should also know the names of department because that's the information that we are going to fill later on. So this is basically the summary tab and thereafter follow the details of those. So any PG diploma, the doctorate degree, the pre-doctoral, post-job, whatever, all these things, certificates and all. So we see thereafter we are going to add the new departments. This is how we'll be adding the new departments and we are going to enter the details. But must remember once again, the numbers that you are mentioned, you are will not be allowed to go beyond that, right? So this is how it is going to appear. Department, you keep on adding the department and thereafter you keep on writing the program, whether the program is governed by some statutory regulatory authority or not, all those details you fill up, right? So this is going to look like this. So next people we shall be talking about here the self declaration again at the end the self declaration um, next comes details of the staff once again while talking about the number of staff whether it's the teaching staff or the non teaching staff there's a lot of confusion as we talk about NAC we must know see there are different uh, stuff for which there is a different cycle in the sense when you talk about the financial year we start we we calculate it as first of april to 31st of march of each year when it is about the hr related things right when it is related if it when it is hr related things so the hr calendar it starts from january to the december of the year if it is about the research publication, interestingly, research publications, they also go by the calendar year from January to December. But otherwise, when you talk about NAC for the IQAC thing, what is the calendar? Calendar, it is from 1st of June to 31st of May. So got to be really careful about that. So 1st of June to 31st of May. And what's your academic cycle? Just a second. Okay, here we go. So uh, now I was uh, telling about the HR calendar. HR calendar is January to December. Your academic calendar, that's from 1st of July to 30th of June. So it, that there's lots and lots of confusion, but we got to be very, very careful. So specifically now when it talks about number of permanent teaching staff, which date do you calculate? Right, which date do you calculate? So HR people, whenever you are going to ask them for the data, they go by the calendar year. Let them be happy with that. So for the let's say for the year um, 12, if you say so, they'll say January ka data lelo, right? Or 31st of December ka. So theek hai. But must remember, go with one date only. It shouldn't be for teaching humne first Jan le liya, and for non-teaching humne 31st December le liya. 
So uh, that's it. So number of permanent teaching staff, you write down gender wise, male, female, and the transgender. Number of the other teaching staff. So again, the male, female, and transgender. Number of non-teaching staff, male, female, and uh, transgender plus total. Now let me tell you, you know, majority cases, this is where people, they go wrong because precisely they do not understand as to which date should be kept as the benchmark. So if you're talking about a particular year, which date should be considered, whether January, the 31st of May, the 30th of June, or the 31st of December. Therefore, please see, go by the HR calendar here. Thereafter comes the number of programs that you've offered. So again, the, the screenshot again. So I said UG, if you've written two, right? So it's going to give us the option for two under the UG. So that's, that's that. This is sorted categories. It's a better screenshot here. Permanent, uh, I just spoke about this. Number of permanent teaching staff, the other and the non-teaching. Here comes the categories. Number of regular face-to-face -face students, right? Details of the students. Now we've started. This is details of staff. This is the details of the students. So does the college have an academic MOU with any foreign institution? If so, attach the MOU, right? So we just can't say yes and then escape. If it is, um, if actually you have the MOU, so I'm really glad today I saw your presentation wherein your teacher, she told us about the MOUs that you people have just entered into. That's really wonderful. So the actual memorandums of understanding is what is going to be uploaded here, right? You can't just write one letter, one line, and then on the letterhead and your head of institution signs it. No, that's not an MOU. So MOU, when you say proper terms and conditions should be mentioned there, then you call it MOU, right? Thereafter comes the um, quality information, the last of the caps wherein we are going to talk about your IQAC, wherein uh, Dr. Anup Mas role now uh, comes to the center. So here you'll be talking about stuff like date of establishment of IQAC. Then this is important. Wherever people, whichever cells we've constituted, whichever committees we've constituted, you can't be, you can't uh, free yourself by saying that the committee has been constituted. For every committee that has been constituted, the committee has to meet. And if the committee is meeting, they have to write down what all transpired during the meeting, means the minutes of meeting, they've got to be there, right? And then you are writing down minutes of meeting. Prior to that, the agenda has to be there. So the agenda number one got to be there. The minutes of meetings got to be there. And of course, the people who attended, their signatures got to be there. And nowadays, you know, everything has to pass through IQAC. It is presumed that every good thing or bad thing that's happening in the institution has to happen through the IQAC. That means some commitments you made and thereafter you took some action. Therefore, the action taken report has to be, um, it has to be appended, right? So first time you met and thereafter next time, next meeting, you have to come up with the action taken report. So in the morning we were talking about the uh, student feedback and the stakeholder feedback right in the directorates of higher education so there also it is not simply about collecting the data so of course start it starts with the collection of data from different stakeholders and number one this has to be specifically with respect to the curriculum number one number two all the stakeholders uh, inputs that have come you have to analyze Analysis has happened. Then we say action taken report. Action taken report, uh, it is a very, very important document. So when you say action taken report, we have to map the inputs of the feedback with the changes that you have incorporated in the curriculum for the following year. So for example, there was a feedback from the industry which said that let us introduce some new course because uh, let's say shipping law. This is something new which is coming. Let's have a course on shipping law, which was not there earlier. So the idea came and you can't say, yeah, the idea was very good. That's not the action taken. Action taken is now this shipping law must find a place in the program structure of your following academic year. Right. That's people, the action taken report. Or maybe there are some redundant kind of courses that you are running. So feedback says this is absolutely useless. So now you're removing that course. That's the action taken. Action you are taking on whatever, you know, inputs that are coming to you. So date of submission of AQRs of last four years to NAC and supporting documents same. All these things, you know, they are going to be mentioned under the quality information, which is your IQSC coordinator's role. So so date of establishment of IQSC, here you've mentioned, right? 
and very very important save and next and before we submit view iiqa compliance this is very important okay so here we see we've done all this thereafter next we click on make payment right so we see how many tabs were there you had basic eligibility which you filled affiliation compliance you filled profile academic and then the quality information once all this is done click this and see there is no warning no error thereafter we move on to the make payment tab we move on to make payment tab here this is how it's going to appear so amount this 29500 this is basically 25000 plus the gst which makes it 29500 so it's like 30000 rupees right and then you'll have to make the dd number also so dd number uh, d, the demand draft will have to be made so what's the number the date and it has to be made in the name of in the favor of director nag bangalore so bank name ifsc etc etc all this stuff you uploaded the copy and last is save and next so i am you know basically insisting on that save and next save and next that's actually important then comes your submit iqa so after making you can proceed on to submit accept the terms right so the screen like this will say so i, I like you know you may check this basic eligibility if there are some warning go back and correct affiliation compliance if there so here it says 000 means this is fine basic eligibility no error 00 affiliation no issue profile a second people a second actually today you people delayed you know you people delayed i had a meeting which is already started at 3 o'clock and that's why people are calling me again and again so we are towards the end you can see my screen dr sapna can you yes, see my screen yes ma'am okay. yes ma'am yes so, so here we see there is an error in the academic information go back and correct and finally you make the payment with this we are done so submit iqa is the last thing you have some queries quickly only 2 minutes because i have to rush hope i made things clear <laughs> yeah yeah it, it was a very wonderful session ma'am very 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 clear to all of us okay so if there are any any questions please ask question if you have any question guys See, it's like we too are like our students. We never had any doubts, you know. It's only <laughs> when we start preparing for the exam that's where we realize, "Yeah, hey, Baba, yes. I don't know the answer for this." <laughs> anyway, that's perfectly all right. Thank you so much, yeah. ma'am, and your team. It was nice uh, meeting you all. Uh, Same here. So yeah. Much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, Doctor Surya Rashmi Rawat ji, for such an informative, enlightening, and uh, meaningful session. I should say. we are grateful to you for highlighting the minute details of how to we have to get ready to submit our ssr starting from zero step that is uh, filling of i aqar and submitting it to step 1 fulfilling of sorry filling of iiqa and then finally going to do, uh, submit our ssr i'm sure it must have added the understanding of all the faculty members and once again i'm very very thankful to you for sparing your the time to be with us this afternoon thank you ma'am okay thank you so oh, much yeah. everybody thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you नेक्स्ट सेशन विल बी चेयर्ड बाय डॉक्टर दीप्ति ओवर टू डॉक्टर दीप्ति yeah thank you dr anupama good afternoon everyone once again a warm welcome to all 
We now move on to the fifth and final technical session of today's webinar. The resource person for this session is Dr. Alok John, Dean, National International Collaboration and Consultancy Services, Patna Women's College. Dr. John has already been introduced in the morning session before he gave his enlightening lecture on the role of IQAC in institutionalizing quality culture in higher educational institutions. For this reason, it is unnecessary for me to stand between him and his next lecture. So I request him to address us on his next subject, namely the student feedback and peer team visit. So over to Dr. John, please. Thank you so much, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. So it feels good to be back again and with the same momentum. And I hope by now the sessions uh, um, our participants are more clear about the various uh, uh, avenues that uh, NAC accreditation offers with respect to the IIQA and the filling of uh, SSR. Now moving ahead, uh, there is something important that I wanted to share with you all that I was not able to complete in my past session and later on I got to see. Uh, I will just uh, share my screen. Since I was dealing with the IQAC aspects of uh, today's uh, session, I would like to share the details of IQAC which is required in the filling of SSR. Just give me a second. Is it visible? Yes, sir. It's is the visible. screen visible? Yes. So yes, sir, this is yes. this is a snippet from uh, the manual for SSR filing for the accredited and constituent colleges. So while we were discussing about the IQAC and the quality culture that IQAC has to retain, uh, I also wanted to highlight the key questions within the preparation of SSR that we have to keep in our mind. There is one question which comes under criterion six that is governance leadership. Under that key indicator, uh, there is a separate key indicator 6.5 internal quality assurance cell, which is of solid 30 marks. So the question here is 6.5.1. Internal quality assurance cell has contributed significantly for institutionalizing and internalization that we were talking about in our uh, morning session. The quality assurance strategies and the process. It reviews the teaching learning processes, that is the feedback, structures and methodologies of operation and learning outcomes at periodic intervals and records the incremental improvement in various activities. So like we see it is a qualitative uh, metric and here we need to write a short description of about 500 words of how IQAC plays an important role in the quality assurance and sustenance. So uh, if we want to uh, you know gain good marks in this uh, in this uh, particular score is 15 so we can you know adopt as many as best practices that uh, you know we had discussed uh, in our previous uh, session and we can uh, you know of course implement them in our activity. Next is quality assurance initiatives of institution uh, holds a regular meeting of IQAC feedback collected, analyzed, used for improvements. So in this particular session, it is all about student feedback and the peer team visit. So when we talk about the feedback, feedback collection is an important uh, activity of the IQAC and uh, the quality assurance will be you know assured only once feedback is not only collected, it does not mean that feedback is collected and kept inside the Almira, but at the very same time it has to be analyzed and it has to be made into a public forum and public forum is the solid institutional website. And of course action taken and has to be taken into action consideration. Is 
All right. Next is collaborative quality initiatives with other institutions. Just now, uh, Madam uh, was talking about the MOU and collaboration and uh, membership of international networks. So it must not be a, uh, you know, again, it must not be kept into a document. It has to be a functional collaboration. By functional collaboration, we mean at least uh, two to three collaborative activities must happen between the two collaborating institutions or the uh, colleges uh, within an academic period. And within an academic period means that is 1st of July to 31st of June. That is how you uh, we, we take into consideration this academic period for the filing of reports of AQR and also for filing of uh, uh, data to the SSR. That is from 1st of July to 31st of the Ju 30 June 30 30 June. Participation in NIRF is also important and uh, it is uh, it has a good weightage. So now uh, you know national uh, institutional ranking framework is also available and institution apart from their NAC accreditation must go for their NIRF ranking and any other quality audit that could be uh, administrative and academic audit or uh, you know they can take an ISO certification they can conduct an external peer team visit mock external peer team visit every year especially for the uh, those colleges which are granted UGC autonomy they have a external IQAC team which you know conducts the peer team uh, visit to the college every year and they present a report to the UGC. So unlike that, the college can also have an NBA accreditation of their courses, especially those courses which are uh, you know, accredited and registered under the All India Council for Technical Education. Usually we see colleges with MCA and MBA programs can go for the NBA accreditation. So this was thing that I wanted to share for the preparation of IQAC in the SSR. I'll just uh, close this and move to the next. OK, is my PPT visible? Not yet, sir. Not yet. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. OK, so finally, I'm <laughs> glad that I made it. I'm not too used to very much on Microsoft team, but uh, yeah, I'm happy that I'm getting on the groove with this particular webinar. Yeah, so welcome uh, to all the participants to the student feedback and peer team visit session. So why student feedback is important? It is important to provide the students a greater role in teaching learning process. It is kind of giving them a participative uh, you know, approach that it is not a because teaching and learning is a two way process. So we must also know we must also tell the students that they also play a very important and a greater role in the teaching learning process and hence a mechanism of feedback is give, uh, you know, provided to them. To develop a sense of greater responsibility and belonging to the institute among the students. So when we give them an opportunity to let them know about, you know, their ideas, their thoughts on the two institutions, feedback process, teaching learning process, infrastructure process, governance process. So they feel that they are there is a certain platform in which their, you know, their thoughts can also be heard. They can also be heard. So that is also a very important aspect that gives them a sense of responsibility and belongingness. They also develop a skill of critical evaluation in their process. 
to modify and rearrange the course contents based on the students constructive suggestions because students are the end user of the curriculum of the courses. So it is always important to get their feedback so that certain constructive uh, feedback can be implemented in the course curriculum. To help the teachers modify and improve their teaching methodologies to open a transparent communication channel between the students and the teacher and to maintain the functioning of teaching learning process in the best possible way. Instructor, there is two kind of feedback which is very common is instructor feedback and the course feedback. Instructor feedback is on the basic feedback of the particular teacher who is delivering that particular course in a program, whether the teacher is uh, you know efficiently communicating it, uh, the, the concepts well in advance, the teacher is punctual in the class, the teacher uses ICT facilities, the teacher uh, you know gives uh, 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 proper impetus to the slow learners and there is also provision for the improvement of fast learner students. So this is especially basically it is re related to the individual teacher who is undertaking that particular course that is instructors feedback. The next is the course feedback. So the feedback is taken on the course on the curriculum, whether the curriculum designed is suited to the uh, students need or whether the students find it little difficult or whether the uh, curriculum needs to be enhanced as per their wish and desires or the students uh, feel that the curriculum has uh, was being lengthy or it can, could be more interactive or it was more of a, a rote, it promote rote learning or it promotes practical thinking, creative thinking, problem solving. So such things are you know undertaken and analyzed by the course feedback. The students are asked to rate the instructor of the concerned course on 10 parameters at a five point scale. It can be a lit curve scale from zero to five and five being the highest and zero being the lowest. And finally, they are asked to give their comments how the instructor can improve his or her performance. Similarly, they are asked to rate their concerned course in five parameter on the same five point scale. And finally, they are asked to give their comments on how the course can be improved. The students are informed about the system at the beginning of the semester itself. So when the students are given, uh, you know, being oriented towards the various aspects of the college, it is also important to have a particular session on the feedback mechanism before the beginning of the session. So the student is uh, you know before the beginning of the semester. So the student is aware of you know what is expected uh, from the semester, what is expected out of the teaching process and when the feedback is taken, he can give a he or she can give a positive or uh, feedback which is really important and uh, uh, at the beginning and they are encouraged to give their responses regularly and continuously. Another good practice of taking the feedback is usually the feedback is taken during the last uh, window period of the of the closure of the semester that is before the uh, you, before the examination because then uh, then it will be more uh, uh, you know focused. Otherwise if you take uh, the feedback after the examination then uh, the students will be more biased towards uh, the question papers and whether it was tough or difficult. So it is always advisable to take the feedback during the last window period of the semester when the last week of the semester is going to end. Then it is uh, the ideal time to take the feedback on the instructor feedback and the course feedback before the examination. In some cases, uh, you know, uh, uh, participation in the examination, uh, you know, is only after the filling of the uh, feedback, students feedback. So in many institutions, this is compulsory. Student feedback is compulsory and in many cases it is voluntary in nature. So that depends on the kind of institutions that uh, are functioning. So what is the impact of feedback? The feedback system has opened the and strengthened a transparent communication channel between the students, teachers and administrators. It has helped in modifying and restructuring of the course content. 
the teaching quality over the years have improved and the students participation in the process has expanded. The overall sense of belonging to the Institute among the students and teachers have also been strengthened. So that is how feedback has played a very important role. Now what are the resources which are required for taking a feedback? widely accessible computer network with connectivity facility and monitoring mechanism uh, another aspect that uh, uh, that uh, comes into picture is when you take the feedback uh, your ip address should not the institution ip address should not be uh, you know used while giving the students is giving a feedback so it is always ideal that the student must give the feedback when they are not in the campus so NAC, uh, you know, plays a very important uh, aspect that the IP address of the institution while giving the feedback in the because you know in many cases what happens is uh, there is a monitored closed environment where the students are asked to give positive feedback about the institution and the instructor at large. So that is why NAC says that the IP address of the institution should not be matched when the feedback is uh, provided. Now, if we focus on the SSR manual for the affiliated constituent college, this is a small snippet from uh, I have taken the screenshot from the SSR manual. Uh, criterion one. Curriculum enrichment key indicator 1.44 deals with the feedback system. This is of 20 marks and. If you see this is the question. Institution obtains feedback on academic performance and ambience of the institution from various stakeholders not only the students we are various stakeholders means the students the teachers the alumni the parent and the recruiters such as students teachers employees alumni etc an action taken report on the feedback is made available on the institution website so uh, you know it has to be yes if you want to score if an institution wants to score uh, in this particular section. So it is uh, expected that every academic year the institution after completion of the every academic year the institution uploads semester wise semester wise feedback it must not be just for one year it must be if there are six semesters for a particular program so there has to be six uh, six times feedback must be taken for that particular academic year and everything has to be uploaded in the institutional website. It has to be uh, analyzed well and thereafter what are the key findings from the uh, from that particular feedback that has to be mentioned and the action taken or the proposed action taken that is envisaged in order to substantiate in order to satisfy that particular feedback must be highlighted in that particular institutional website. Moving further, there is also a column from the SOP SOP for the uh, accredited and constituent college. This relates to the same question metric 1.4.1. This is also 1.4.1. Now what are the things that has to be taken into consideration? Sample filled in feedback forms from the stakeholders to be provided. So when you are filling it in the preparing it for the SSR, you need to put the every, all the feedback cannot be uploaded. So only a sample filled in uh, feedback form has to be provided. Stakeholder feedback analysis report, which is signed by the principal, has to be provided. So, or whatever the feedback has been received from the stakeholder has to be analyzed and then it has to be signed and sealed by the principal of the institution. Department wise action taken report on feedback signed by the competent authority. In this case, the head of the department countersigned by the principal has to be uploaded. Document showing the communication with the affiliating university for the feedback provided. Once the feedback is also provided, the feedback must also be communicated to the parent university. And that kind of document uh, that is the inward letter or the outward letter along with the feedback uh, analysis report has to be uploaded. Action taken by the affiliating university on the feedback has to be provided. 
only filled in forms will be considered so uh, you know one cannot just fill the uh, upload the plain draft feedback form only the filled in form feedback forms will be considered and must, one must also ensure in the dvv process when the data validation and verification process is going on they might ask any random any random feedback form of any of the stakeholder so uh, there must be a system in which all the feedback forms for that particular academic year for for the for all the pertaining semesters must be you know stored well because in the dvv process it can randomly ask for uh, you know uploading of any of the feedback form of the stakeholders feedback report should be hosted in the institutional website anywhere else if the feedback form is uploaded it will not be considered that is what it is said feedback report reflected in other websites will not be considered so so far uh, there is uh, this is about the student feedback uh, process i wanted to highlight something which is very important is about the student satisfaction survey i'll just open this uh, is there any question so far are you all following I am looking for a feedback. Yes, yes uh, maybe at the end um, we can ask okay. for the questions. Okay, okay. I just wanted to just have a feedback, quick feedback, so that whether to know whether I am in the momentum or not. Uh, I'll just share this uh, template for the student satisfaction survey. Okay, yeah, I have got this. Yes. So, is it visible to all of you? Yes, sir. It's visible. Ah. so this is a this is the guideline for the revised accreditation framework for the student satisfaction survey so along with the dvv process when the dvv process is going on nac will also go for the student satisfaction survey now what is it is it the same as student feedback or is it different yes it is different it is different from what i was till now we were talking about and which is mentioned in the criterion 1 that is curriculum framework that feedback the higher Edu higher ed uh, education institution has to do on a academic year basis semester wise but this is this student satisfaction survey this will be conducted by nac so this is not conducted by the hei but it is conducted by the nac and what the higher academic institution has to do higher education institution has to do they have to upload at least 50% 50% of the currently enrolled student as per the data template format in the excel sheet in the portal which is given there is a format for the sss format and what is the format serial number then they will ask about the student id enrollment id name email id and mobile number of the student so basically this is about the format and any other format or text format uh, which is different from the template given by the nac will not be no accepted so one has to be very cautious about this column names are case sensitive so case sensitive means one should avoid putting apostrophe or comma or full stop so it is case sensitive and no other column or cell should be blank repetition of names email id mobile number is not allowed so that that does not mean that the same name email id and mobile number will be used for multiple times there are two separate columns for the student id and enrollment id in the absence of separate id the institution can repeat the same id in the two columns in many cases student id is different from what their enrollment id is if it is same then the uh, same has to be provided in the two columns 
Now total entry should not be greater than the students marked in the IIQA. So this is very important uh, aspect that has to be taken into consideration. The total number of students in the IIQA format uh, is, which has been provided by the HEI that should match the list which is uploaded for the SSS student satisfaction survey. Student satisfaction survey will be administered to the institution simultaneously with the DVV process and it will have a set of 20 objective and one subjective questions. So please keep this in mind. 20 objective questions will be posed to the students and one subjective uh, you know, questions will be given to the student to give their feedback to record their feedback. And it is also available in the NAC uh, website. After this, I shall be you know, displaying that as well. And the email address that, uh, which is which is provided by the HEI email address of the students, these particular uh, you know questionnaire will be sent. So maximum two survey attempts will be initiated to reach a desired level of response. So for colleges which is under conducting the UGPG programs and the autonomous colleges, responses should be received from at least 10% of the student population or 100 whichever is lesser. So HEI must always motivate beforehand, uh, motivate the students and they must you know, sensitize the students about the importance of this SSS student satisfaction survey. And maybe you know they can be trained on uh, uh, you know uh, why a feedback is important, why their feedback is important for the accreditation process, how this accreditation process will be helpful in their career, in their curriculum. So all these must be sensitized to the students beforehand. Of course, for universities, 10% of the student population or 500, whichever is less. This is the quorum. If the response rate is lower than the limit mentioned NAC, the metric will not be taken for evaluation straight away. Now, the student satisfaction survey will be completed within the 30 days simultaneously with the DVV process. So as soon as the survey is initiated by the coordinator of NAC, it has to be completed within the 10 days. Okay? The institute can encourage students to participate in the survey and guide them about the survey to make the student satisfaction survey possible within the given point of 10 days. Or uh, if you if you refer to the NAC uh, portal NAC website, uh, there is a poster which is also available that higher education institutions must you know make it available for all the students that gives a lot of information on the SSS. So SSS questionnaire is in English. So NAC website will have both English and Hindi version available. So if needed, HEI can make local language trans translation available for the information of student before they take the survey. So translation of the uh, survey form is also possible. So this is also like a Likert scale and it will be scale of 0 to 4. And four is the positive most positive response being rated is four and most negative response is zero. All right. I'll just show you a draft template of this. Uh, what a student satisfaction survey looks like. One thing which is very important is when the students are giving their feedback, they must use their own device and the IP address of the institution must not match. Yes. Is this visible? Yes, yes. OK, so this is the format template for the student satisfaction survey, which is provided by NAC under the key indicate 2.7.1 under the teacher learning evaluation. And identity of the student is not revealed, so it is an anonymous questionnaire. So it talks about uh, whether they are, uh, you know, giving this survey for the first time or for uh, you know, the second time all these questions are there, the age, the college, the gender. 
what degree program are they pursuing what subject are they pursuing question number 21 is a qualitative questions whereby the student is given an opportunity to give suggestions or the improvement or mention the weaknesses of the institution and once it is given by all the students an analysis of uh, this is done by nac it is only restricted to the teaching learning process not on infrastructure not on any other aspect so how much of the syllabus was covered in the class so whether it was 80 to 100 70 to 84 55 to 69% 30 to 54% or below 30% what was the coverage of the syllabus range of coverage of the syllabus in the class how well the teacher prepared for the class how well were the teacher been able to communicate the teacher's approach to teaching can be described as whether it is good very good excellent all these options are available with the students fairness of the internal evaluation process was the performance in the assignment discussed with you the institution takes active interest in promoting internships student exchange field visit opportunities the teaching and the mentoring process in the institution is in the cognitive social and emotional growth institution provides multiple opportunities to learn and grow teachers inform about your expected competencies course outcomes and program outcomes your mentor does a necessary follow up with the assigned tasks to you teacher illustrate the concept through examples and applications teacher identify your strengths and encourage you with providing right level of challenges and there are other things also about the teaching learning processes so it's majorly on teaching learning process and three observation or suggestion that can improve the overall teaching learning experience so this is a template you everyone can go and see this it is available in the nac website yes now let us come back to the nac peer team visit so after uh, the dvv process is over the nac will also ask for certain uh, you know queries that is within the data validation and verification process and uh, you know uh, within the 30 days the higher education institution has to respond back to those queries and thereafter after 3 months close to after 3 months nac will send peer team uh, you know the of uh, a member comprising of uh, the NAC, which is uh, formulated as nac peer teams assessors nac assessors to visit the institution so the chairperson will comprise of vice chancellor or pro vice chancellor or a former vice chancellor or a former pro vice chancellor a full rank professor and Uh, as the member coordinator and the member as the principal or a ex principal or a former principal of any college which is accredited by nac so these three people uh, will visit the institution as a peer team visit team members so peer team visit department visit comprises of departmental center presentation so when they come they will visit uh, the principal will give the presentation then followed by the iqac coordinator and thereafter they will have their departmental visits so what will happen is 50% of the department uh, you know they can opt for visiting the which uh, visiting them and uh, based on that 25% can be randomly selected by them and 25% can be selected by the hgis so when they go the department will make a presentation the head of the department will make a presentation they will interact with the faculty document verification will be done there based uh, only on the a qualitative metric related to those evidences which are related to the qualitative metric will be assessed by them and visit to selected teaching and research lab will be done academic or administrative peers who are assessors 
for our academic research administration and extension activities so the objective of this visit is to get the overall perception of the quality of the education delivery and the hei will only get to know about their identity 3 days before the actual visit so it is not that the hei will be knowing who who are the people who are visiting them they will only get to know about them 3 days before the actual visit their entire accommodation and travel is arranged by nac so hei will not have to be bothered about arranging or for their travel or accommodation however institution will have to arrange about the local transport and of course uh, you know they have to host them so the peer team visit will focus uh, on the qualitative but they can also ask specific questions on the quantitative aspects peer team is expected to cover maximum number of departments and cover at least 50% of the department with the preference given by both the institution and the peer team now uh, when they go to departments the departments will need to prepare a crisp presentation it may not be a lengthy presentation it can be a crisp presentation for about 10 minutes then overall department and the center based on the seven criteria of nax can be the presentation can be formulated in that aspect qualitative aspects facts figures can be provided to substantiate figures can be projected for the entire assessment period highlight the qualitative aspects using the summary slide with reference to the qualitative questions departmental best practice and future plans can be highlighted what is the best practice of the department what are the future plans of the department nac peer team visit departmental visit locations and infrastructure they will visit the locations and infrastructure they will have to visit the venue and presentation for the document verification departmental display boards with the faculty name board infrastructure and the department at a glance boards etc teaching and learning labs item boards which is displayed including the fire extinguishers safety apparatus name boards of all the faculty in charges and the technical staff uh, over the period of time it can also be archived if the faculty or faculty staff is not available or he has left the institution so archive must also be made available to them laboratory highlights achievement and accomplishments if there is a specific project which the department has got or the patent or a particular paper presentation or a publication which is very significant all these things can be highlighted as an accomplishment list of major equipments list of major equipment or exercises which is done education aids and charts teaching aids teaching uh, uh, plans can also be highlighted safety instructions for lab laboratory manuals can be you know made into policies can be developed and rules and regulations then there uh, can also be an exhibition so exhibition can be made on walk through of the department and the center level it can be displayed in the corridor or a conference room or a lab it can be of the journey of the entire journey of the institution or an exhibition about a particular aspect or a department at large it can be science exhibition it can be geography department can hold about uh, the various uh, you know uh, models commerce department can also host various kinds of uh, uh, tools uh, the various uh, commerce banking uh, methods so all such kind of exhibitions can be arranged showcase of selected departments center outcomes activities and achievements in the field of research faculty students extension placement and alumni innovations innovations and working models and demos in the respective lab both teaching and research so this is a particular template that the department can create when they are creating the files so this is has a comprehensive list of the files which is defined by the iqac considering the accreditation and ranking statutory and regulatory compliances so it has the handbook the departmental handbook annual report of the department the regulation the syllabus the curriculum of all the academic programs offered by the department and the successive successive curriculum records on revision
The department must also have the board of studies, the composition, the minutes of the meeting, approval letters and the resolution for academic council and statutory bodies with regard to the programs which are run in the department, alumni details, alumni database with the prominent alumni which are doing very well in their life and along with their feedback. Budget annual budget and budgetary provisions if there are any detailed classroom process, the mentor list, the mentor mentee, uh, you know, structures, course plans, class and course outcomes, composition, minutes, conduct of uh, meetings, supplementary coaching. If the coaching, if a particular department is also offering any particular coaching also, that can also be uh, recorded. The timetable, the workload, attendance registers, teaching staff profile, the non teaching both administrative and technical staff profile student list year wise batch wise and class wise have to be maintained department infrastructure display through the boards and banners research report a comprehensive report comprehensive detail about the current and the academic sponsored research of the scholars research which is done by the students noteworthy publications achievements patents extra can be highlighted faculty development program the proof of attending and organizing the staff development programs orientation programs refresher programs delivery expert lecture invited lecture etc can be recorded evaluation procedure and observation which is necessary instructional methods can be developed by the staff minutes of the departmental meeting and the copy of the circular record pertaining to the selection of staff pay and reward statement selection committee minutes relevant to the department appointment regulation recruitment promotion extra can be you know recorded so there is stock register equipment register that has to be recorded so the list a comprehensive list is available this is also provided in the nac website then the result and examination result can also be highlighted so every department in the particular institution have to prepare these kinds of documents evidences when the peer team visit comes to visit them So these documents are likely to be verified during the NAC peer team visit. So these documents are subsumed as the departmental or the center file list. Institution is likely to specify additional documents as per the NAC after confirmation of the dates. So following is a representative document list based on the qualitative metrics. So based on the national global developmental needs related to health, entrepreneurship and society, whether how the syllabus has the program outcome, program specific outcome and course outcome as per the outcome based education, whether the uh, curriculum has conducted uh, courses on uh, human values, professional ethics, sustainability, or whether there is a circular for innovation, such things can be highlighted. Program wise, semester wise attainment report from every faculty member has to be created. Next is research and consultancy policy. If there every institution uh, for the criterion three research, innovation and extension, there has to be a policy of research. There has to be a policy for industrial collaboration, utilization report. If, if uh, someone has, uh, if an institution or a department has received government funding or for the research project or for any kind of consultancy projects, utilization report, support of the technology business incubation, patent cell, institution innovation council under the Ministry of Education, entrepreneurial cell of the university can be promoted. Departmental extension activities in neighborhood community in terms of impact and sensitizing of the students. These things can be created in the document. Any question so far? Okay. Next is uh, with uh, criterion five committee meetings and minutes and closing the loop whether what was the issue and how that particular issue was closed brought into closure. 
departmental association and professional society chapters participation in technology festival alumni contribution by the way of seminars webinars talk support to the student club can also be uh, you know highlighted Criterion six talks about uh, uh, the various departmental mission uh, that is uh, governance, leadership and management. So within that, the departments can have their documents on vision and mission and its alignment. The departmental committee and involvement of faculty in the meetings, minutes of the meeting, the budget and the strategic plan, employee handbook, career progression policy uh, for the various faculty members and the quality assurance reports of every year. Now when the NAC, uh, in, uh, there is an uh, interaction of the peer team visit with the stakeholders. The first stakeholder being the faculty. So they will, uh, you know, interact to the faculty with respect to the awareness and alignment of the vision and mission of the college, whether the faculty is aware and they know that their, uh, you know, their uh, service must be fall in alignment with the vision and mission of the college and the department. The curriculum development and pedagogy, initiation of programs, modifications in curriculum. So when the peer team interacts with the faculty members, all such things can be, you know, they, this could be the part of the communication. Teaching learning methods, uh, student feedback, faculty evaluation through self evaluation, whether if faculties are self evaluating themselves, individual professional development faculties are going for the individual's professional development. Uh, they can they are going for refresher courses. They are going for the university HR, HRRDC refresher courses is available. Uh, courses through uh, Swayam platform is available. So whether they are availing those things or not, NITTR. Uh, uh, also offers uh, various courses for the faculty members, they, whether they are attending the faculty development programs, whether they have received certain awards and recognition. Access to computer center has been provided to faculty members. What is the level of computer literacy and the use for every faculty member? Grievance led redressal mechanism and the welfare program for faculty and non teaching staff members. Participation in the preparation of self study report. Usually, a NAC working committee is formulated when uh, such kind of SSR is being filed. So, uh, you know, senior teachers and the active teachers are given in charge of every criteria, and under that, they can co opt other members. So, how actively the entire whether it was only the IQSC which was working for the SSR or it was the entire faculty member and the staff member of the institution which was involved in the preparation of the SSR. What is the impact of autonomy for uh, this is respected to in respect to the uh, UGC autonomous colleges, how the um, autonomy has brought a positive or a negative impact to the college. Details of any innovative activity which is undertaken or pursued by the student and staff members. Awareness of various policies at university level like the research, the consultancy, the career progression extra and the coordinator, the overall campus level coordinator for these peer team uh, interactions would be the IQAC coordinator. So it is the IQAC coordinator which has a lot of responsibilities on the shoulder and making these interactions viable. Next interaction is with the non teaching staff members. So the peer team will interact with the non teaching staff members. They will also inquire about the staff development programs they had, they had undergone. So not only for the faculty members, the institution must also organize programs for the non teaching staff members and it can be computer literacy program. It can be soft skill. It can be personality development. It can be emotional intelligence and there is a plethora and a variety of it can be finance for non finance executives. So uh, there are office management is also one of the options where such kind of training programs can be imparted to the non teaching staff members. Staff view on the value of their contribution to the institution relationship with the faculty, whether it is a user friendly approach towards the students. Staff welfare programs are provided grievance redressal mechanism, security of the service level of the computer literacy and the use. And again, it is coordinated by the IQAC coordinator. Next, the peer team will interact with the students and when they interact, they will not allow the presence of any faculty member or any staff member. 
So reason for choosing this, they will inquire the students. What is their reason for choosing this course or the institution? They will ask them to match between the curriculum and the expectation, whether it was flexible, the choice was good or the content which was covered in the entire curriculum curriculum was of the global standard. Appropriateness of the curricular content to the development of knowledge and skills. Relevance to the prospective career. What is the option for the student progression? How uh, you know this particular career has helped in the student progression, student timetable and workload opportunities for part practical and vocational experience, whichever is appropriate range of teaching and learning experienced students views on quality of teaching guidance and support for the independent study students understanding of assessment methods and the criteria. So all these things will be inquired by the NAC peer team when they will interact with the students, whether they have an idea about their assessment system or the criteria or there are other aspects. Next, NAC peer team will also interact with the parents. They will also inquire about their general impression about the institution. Whether it is a specific reason for selecting the institution for their wards. What is the specific reason for, uh, you know, why they wanted their wards to get admitted in this particular institution? In many cases, it is one of the premier most institution of the city. It is that the family members, their uh, predecessors have, uh, predecessors in the family have studied in the same institution. So they want their ward to be studied. Uh, in that particular institution. The institution has good name and fame with their with respect to the teaching curriculum and their course rigor. So that is why they want to send their words to uh, you know study there. The nature of interaction with the head and the faculty of the institution and the frequency uh, facilities with overall development of the wards, employment, higher education needs, plan for the wards, and suggestion as to this institution can help its students to uh, uh, at a better level. The peer team thereafter will also interact with the alumni. Alumni, they will, uh, you know, garner the questions about the competencies with the institution has developed in their alumni, whether their alumni are in the prominent positions. So alumni meeting is done, whether there is a registered alumni association as per the Societies Act or uh, nature and outcome. What is the funding which is generated by the alumni? Alum, there is a question on alumni contribution. So suggestions for active functioning of the alumni, whether there is a participative uh, active participation of alumni in the functioning of the college. Suggestion for the improvement of the institution and the areas in which they can contribute. So all these things can be uh, a part of the interaction between the NACPEER team and the alumni. The NAC peer team will visit the IQAC office and meet the IQAC members. So a short presentation and interaction is given to the IQAC members and uh, files and documents pertaining to the office at the campus level related to the ranking and accreditation will be assessed. Acting on the previous peer team report. So when the NAC team will come, they will definitely ask for the previous cycle peer team report and not only that they will also want to know what is the action taken. It is not that they will only seek the previous cycle accreditation peer team report, but they will also question whether the institution, whether the higher education institution, whether the HEI has uh, you know taken action, positive action as per the recommendations which is given in the previous uh, cycle peer team report. Feedback from parents, teachers and students uh, can be assessed. Interaction with the potential employees in the concerned region. They will identify a new research area suitable to the local and regional needs. So, so uh, loca local situatedness of the institution comes into picture. So how the institution is able to provide support to the local and regional needs. Survey for the need based and customized programs, whether it is done yearly external academic audit uh, administrative audit has been conducted 
suggestions for argumentation of infrastructure from parents, teachers, students and alumni. Uh, impact of autonomy if it is applicable. Documentation of activities of the college, the plans to generate resources, optimum utilization of institutional infrastructure and these will be coordinated by the IQAC coordinator. There after NAC will also visit to the student welfare office and will have subsequent interactions. So a short presentation focusing on the various activities such as the counseling activities, the grievance redressal and feedback can be provided. Anti ragging committee members will meet the peer team uh, members and peer team members will look their minutes of the meeting, their action taken report. Similarly for the women's cell committee, student discipline committee, hostel and mess committee, club members and coordinators and various kinds of document verification will take place. Thereafter the NAC will team uh, there would be a cultural usually cultural program is organized by the students in respect of the peer team which has uh, visited their institution. Campus level document verification will be done by them. So these are the list of the physical facilities uh, which usually the NAC peer team will take into consideration whether they will go to the library, whether there is a convention center available, whether there is a guest house available, where there is a network operation center or where is the server room. In case of autonomous colleges, it is very important uh, aspect. So they will definitely go for the server room and they will also look for the security audit of these servers. They will visit the computer labs uh, and when they visit they will also look for the annual maintenance contract, the invoices, geotag photographs of uh, these computer labs will be uploaded and it has to be made available to them. Canteen, hostel and mess facility will be visited, sports facility and gymnasium, swimming pool if there is any, medical aid facility, the language lab, building ramps and rails, whether it is accessible for the specially abled candidates. What are the special provisions in terms of infrastructure development which is provided to the specially abled students, especially with respect to locomotor disability. Alternative energy sources, rainwater harvesting, waste management facility and recycling. So campus level coordinator could be the campus director or the minister upkeep, maintenance and the readiness of the utilization of all the facilities with the policy document uh, will be verified. Documentation of utilization of library, computer labs, bandwidth, Wi-Fi, etc. Display boards in charge name of these uh, boards at library, hostel, canteen, sports and other things will be uh, you know, taken into consideration. And then there has to be a banquet dinner can be hosted in respect for them. With this we have uh, concluded uh, the deliberation. Over to Madam. I am happy to take, I will be happy if there is certain queries from the participants. Yes, thank you so much sir. Um, and now if there are any questions, I'm sure the honorable speaker will be happy to respond to them. Any questions? OK, <laughs> then thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So should I take it as a feedback as that it was crystal clear concept? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> thank you for this very, very informative lecture. Uh, thank you for letting us know why the student feedback is important. Sure. Again, it should be taken ideally. What would be the impact of this feedback and the various SOPs that you talked of? 
thank you also, sir, for sharing the guidelines for higher educational institutions for the student survey satisfaction uh, survey and for the sample questionnaire. And finally, a big thank you for letting us know in detail uh, about the exact purpose of the NAC peer team visit, what the team would be looking for, the various documents that need to be maintained and everything. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now uh, thank you so much, sir. And thank you. Thank you, Anupama, ma'am. Thank you, Dipti, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Dipti. Uh, sir, I hope uh, uh, you are you are you are with us uh, for the valedictory also. Yes, I'm available. I'll be there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, now I request Dr. Shweta Thakur to take over. A very warm welcome to one and all present here for the valedictory session of NAC sponsored webinar on revised accreditation and assessment framework in higher educational institutions. We have been listening to eminent speakers deliberating in the areas of role of IQAC in institutionalizing quality culture in higher educational institutes, preparation of IIQA, SSR, data validation and verification, student feedback and peer team visits since morning. All these valuable insights have given us a new perspective that we all should adopt for the NAC accreditation process. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome our distinguished chief guest for the valedictory session, Professor Arvind Kumar Bhatt. Planning and teaches uh, matters. He's the Dean of HPU, Himachal Pradesh University. We are delighted to have him here with us this evening on a very short notice. Thank you, sir. And he's here to ex share his expertise on NAC and, and its processes. Sir has outstanding academic background in biological science with experience of working in research and development institutes, industries, etc. Sir has a large number of international and national research papers to his repute. He was former coordinator IQAC, Himachal Pradesh University, also former head department of biotechnology. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sparing your precious time for the webinar despite your busy schedule. We are indeed privileged to have you with us this evening. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, am I audible to, am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are. So, very good evening to one and all. I'm very, very happy. Should I start, uh, or there is some other, uh, any other person to say, or should I start? Yes, then you are audible. Dr. Anupama, to respond to sir, he is asking, should he start? Yes. Yeah. Is is there any person to say, or I have to uh, speak? So you have to unmute. So you're not audible. He's audible to some of. Excuse me, sir. Shweta, he's yes, okay us. Sir. Yes. Am I audible now? Sir, you are audible. 
Okay. You can start. Okay. Uh, good evening, each and everyone. Uh, respected uh, uh, Professor Dr. Molly, the principal, St. Bate College, all the worthy teachers, senior, junior, all the students, all the resource persons, and the audience. I'm very, very happy uh, to be part of this uh, NEC awareness webinar. And as to, as, I, as told by this previous speaker, it was uh, five minutes back, 10 minutes back, I was told that I have to speak because our Honorable Vice Chancellor was supposed to address all of you. But, but due to some urgency, he said that uh, I have to address. So anyway, I'm fortunate to be a part of the university, uh, which has the college like St. Bede's. Uh, this is one of the most important, best colleges, which started as a teacher's training center in 1904, and it has produced several distinguished personalities if I remember correctly, uh, Dr. Vandana Shiva, one of the five leading environmentalists around the globe, uh, which has got uh, this alternate Nobel Prize for environment. Then uh, Preeti Jinta, uh, Madam, mm, yes. so, so so many IS officers, our, our former chief secretary, I think she was also uh, alumni of St. Bede's, Dr. Poonima Chauhan, so Dr. Rana Nair. So there, there, so there are so many distinguished personality which take the message of St. Bede's at different corners of the world. And so, I, and this, I must congratulate all these faculty members, students, that our university is A grade, but you are, if, if I remember correctly, that is the third cycle, you are already A, A, A grade. And I hope uh, with this, the preparation which are going on, with the dedication, you will certainly be higher than this. A plus. I, I hope it will be A plus. Uh, I don't know uh, because it, I was told only 10 minutes back that I have to speak. Uh, I I have been associated with St. Beads since long. Uh, Madam Shramja would uh, remember I also appeared for uh, the interview in that teacher training Block this old block long, long back. Uh, St. Beach has so many good uh, memories, and you have been one of the wherever, wherever uh, this, this is the name of St. Beach, it is taken with respect, and, uh, and we also feel proud that yes, it is uh, affiliated to our university. When talking about NEC, Everybody, know, I, I think you, I do not know how many experts they have spoken uh, till morning, since morning. But those seven criteria, like curricular aspects, I hope, uh, because you are linked with Himachal University, SP University, so curricular aspects are the part of uh, Board of Studies of you know, University, but there are few few aspects which the college can also uh, take at their own level. <coughs> then teaching, learning, and evaluation. How how the college has uh, progressed in this aspect. Then research, yes, being a college, I think research uh, is not the, one of the main domain of the college, but yes, consultancy extension. Uh, I I remember there are so many groups, clubs in, in St. Beat College, 
through which you are doing community service outreach uh, programs. Infrastructure and library resources, I don't think there is any problem with respect to infrastructure. But yes, uh, learning resources, how best you can utilize, how can you can provide and how best you can utilize uh, these uh, uh, resources to the students. At every level, you have to go for updation, whether it is uh, infrastructure, or it is learning resources, and especially with uh, this uh, COVID situation, this online education has uh, been one of the major uh, source to impart education. So whether we have updated ourselves in this or not, then the student support and progression. What kind of facilities, what, what kind of support you give to the students and how your students, they have progressed from, from this college, whether now, uh, because you are also PG, PG. So whether these uh, students who passed out from St. Beats, they are opting for St. Beats and wherever they are going, what is their progression? As one of the major concern is governance. Governance has never been very, very uh, easy, comfortable, both for the administration as well as the faculty members. Leadership and management. How it, it definitely depends on the leader. If your leader is good, if your overall management is good, you can definitely take the institution further. And one of the most important this aspect that is innovation and best practices. So I think the girls, young girls are very, very innovative. They have n number of unlimited ideas. You have best faculty, I believe so. And with this uh, new army of new brains, dynamic uh, young people added to St. Beats. I think it is their duty to motivate and to contribute in the field of innovation and best practices. Uh, what I, uh, I have been, I have been associated with St. Beats for a long, long time when you started this uh, BSc Biotechnology and Microbiology when I was in state government. So this has been one of the very, very good uh, initiative of the college. And then you have started PG also. So you, uh, St. Beach has also been doing very, very well. But what I feel is uh, you, you have, you might have heard the advice of so many experts since morning. But my personal, I, I would rather suggest uh, uh, Professor Molly. Sometimes uh, whenever we keep on working, so we, we do not know how, how, how we are doing, where we stand. So I would suggest if you can take help of uh, some expert as, as that how to, because now the criteria is entirely changed. Earlier it was 30% uh, yes, was the documentation, 70 was this uh, during inspection by the NAC team. But now it is total reverse. Whatever document you submit, you have assessment for your 70% of the total uh, evaluation and rest of the 30% which is during evaluation by the NAC team. So how best you can present, you can present these documents to this NAC, that is very, very, very important. And sometimes what happens that we have a lot of data but we are not able to present in a presentable way. We are not able to convey in a proper way so that these uh, this, uh, NAC experts, they are not able to judge you. So it would be my personal advice would be, or rather suggestion, uh, please do take advice of uh, some expert. Then three, four things are very, very important. What, what I means uh, uh, practically what I feel. This uh, academic audit of uh, the institution. Then whether you have uh, like uh, one of the speakers, uh, uh, Dr. Alok John, if I uh, pronounce him correctly, he was saying about this uh, is facility of uh, 
physically disabled. So this these kind of facilities, uh, I, I believe uh, Simbeads has digitization, ICT, Wi-Fi, as all other uh, facility of canteen, <laughs> hostel for the students. So what 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 <laughs> facility? <laughs> what facility? Uh, College giving to the faculty members that is very very important. And what steps uh, an administration takes for the welfare of staff? Sometimes uh, due to financial crisis or so many other reasons, uh, there is some problem. But student and staff, student, faculty, and staff welfare should also be one of the prime concern of whether you are able to treat the students like a family member or not. You sometimes you should be very, very uh, strong also, but sometimes you should be soft as well. So my what I feel is it is like a family. Seniors, you have now mixed uh, mixed junk of faculty members, very, very senior uh, at the verge of retirement. Then at the mid mid stage and then very young. So how it is the duty of uh, the leader, how best you can take all the family members uh, with you. There might be uh, defense of opinion many a times. Sometimes we feel that no, no uh, principle is very, very strict. But sometimes we also have to do our duty. Uh, we cannot. Uh, uh, we, we cannot go away from our duties. We have to we have to work. All this, all the faculty members, they have to work for the welfare of the uh, institution. Then, uh, how best, with minimum resources, we can provide opportunity to the students. It is very, very important for each and every institutions to have accreditation now. IQAC, the National Institutional Ranking Framework, NIRF. There have been lot many other surveys, also time survey and all, all that. Uh, what, how, what is the student feedback? How your student think about your college? Then, is it is it uh, possible to keep track of all the students? How many is they they qualify in net? How many they go for these uh, uh, administrative services or other uh, competitive examinations? Do uh, your your course curricula? They have some special uh, component of innovation, some tutorials or skill skill development. I believe you have been doing some uh, the community services uh, service also outreach services. So is it possible to provide those skills to the pass outs by the teachers? And not only this. Do you give sufficient uh, training to your staff? I believe uh, what, what I feel I have felt over the time that uh, this, especially the office staff needs a uh, lot of updation. Uh, because with this uh, NAC, this is uh, National Education Policy, NEP 2020. And the changes in lot many programs. Your your office staff, staff special, specially, I would suggest needs uh, updation, uh, orientation. That that I I feel uh, it should be taken on priority, and as well as the teachers, uh, for for some teachers in different fields, uh, they need some need based uh, updation. Uh, close uh, working of each and everyone, students, teachers, and staff, like a family, and with goal in mind, with all these criteria, whatever you have to deliver. So I I don't think there there, there will be any problem that why uh, why can't uh, Saint Beads uh, uh, can cannot go for A plus, and that that will also be good for our university. So anyway, uh, I think I have taken much more time, uh, but uh, I would finally say that I wish the, the same beats 
uh, can retain its uh, tradition of being number one. Uh, I, I remember when you go to Punjab University, Delhi University, if a student is from St. Beach, uh, the student is uh, considered as a different, with, uh, we also feel proud. So you can, uh, by providing maximum facilities to the students with cooperation of faculty and office staff working, working uh, like a family, uh, we can achieve our goal. So I once again thank, thank the, all the organizers, uh, students, faculty members, and finally, uh, Principal Dr. Uh, Molly Abraham for giving me this opportunity. I wish you all the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. And once again, I would say a big thank you for accepting our invitation on a very short notice. So, sir, your words of wisdom will be an encouragement to us and we are going to take this forward. So all your suggestions, whatever you've suggested today will surely be considered, I hope, in all the colleges with utmost priority especially with reference to academic audit in the institutions, working as a team, and how to manage with minimum resources and make the students available with you know, good opportunities. Uh, this thing uh, regarding the training to the administrative uh, staff is very, very important, and I hope every college will try to monitor this. Need-based updation for teaching, which is the need of the art, and a very important message, so that you have given to each one of us who's attending this webinar, that keeping a goal in mind for having excellence in every sphere. Thank you so much, sir, for sparing your time. And um, just on a very short notice, you have uh, given the approval for being the chief guest for the validat validatory session. I would now request uh, Dr. Anupma Tandon, coordinator IQAC to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, but before that, I have an important information to be shared with you all. After the vote of thanks, feedback form is going to be shared in the chat box. Please try to fill it within 10 minutes. Thereafter, the link is going to be deactivated. Thank you all. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shweta. Uh, good evening. Uh, Honorable Chief Guest, Professor Arvind Kumar Bhatt, Dean Planning, Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla, uh, Dr. Madhukar, uh, former advisor, NAC, Dr. Alok John, Dean, National International Collaborations and Consultancy Services, okay. Patna okay. Women's College, uh, respected principals, coordinators, and dear colleagues. On behalf of Principal Professor Sister Molly Abraham, and staff, St. Beats College, I extend my gratitude to Professor Bhatt, Dean Planning, Himachal Pradesh University, Shimla, for taking out time at such a, a short notice from his busy schedule. Thank you, sir, for gracing the event and encouraging each one of us uh, with your words of wisdom. At the outset, I must thank the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, Bengaluru, for sponsoring the webinar. Uh, let me give you a brief overview of the webinar. In the first technical session, Dr. John uh, highlighted that the prime responsibility of IQAC is to initiate, plan, and supervise various activities that are necessary to increase the quality of education imparted in an institution. Since quality enhancement is a continuous process, the IQAC is an essential part of the institution's system working towards realization of the goals of quality enhancement and sustenance. In the second and third technical sessions, Dr. Madhukar explained the process of preparing the self-study report and standard operating procedures for data validation and verification in detail and suggested that higher educational institutions should be ready with a soft copy of SSR and documents well in advance. 
the institution should provide consolidated response for each of the key aspects with quality indicators framework comprising data templates both quantitative and qualitative in the fourth session dr surya rashmi rawat emphasized that iqa is a process which ascertains whether an institution is accreditation ready or not higher education institutions applying for accreditation and assessment are requested to submit institutional information for quality assessment online in the last session dr alok john explained the process of preparation of nac peer team visit and student feedback and emphasized that heis need to ensure that they have a precise record of student details and a specially conceptualized survey and feedback will be administered to students to give participative approach sense of belongingness and to develop the skill of critical evaluation uh, focusing on quality access and relevance of higher education to achieve the required social transformation for sustainable economic development of the country the webinar has made all the stakeholders aware about the revised accreditation framework of nac i extend my sincere gratitude to all the distinguished speakers for accepting our invitations and making the webinar interesting and meaningful i extend special thanks to dr alok john for his valuable insights timely help and support sir your efforts helped things run smoothly and i cannot thank you enough for that i would like to acknowledge my gratitude to principal professor sister molly for her constant support and encouragement i thank the chairpersons and repeaters of all the technical sessions my colleagues the organizing committee the technical support team especially mr ashish and ms neha for their cordial cooperation last but not least i thank all the attendees for their active participation throughout the webinar as this has greatly contributed to the success of this event once again thank you all uh dr shweta please share the feedback link uh, ma'am the link ma'am the link has already been shared uh, everyone is requested to switch on their uh, camera so that we can have a group photograph if possible yeah. so whosoever is comfortable enough Uh, so ashish has the photograph been taken yes ma'am uh, so you can all i think leave the session thank you so much and please don't forget to uh, uh, fill in the feedback form because otherwise you will not be able to get the certificate So we are. Ma'am, where is the feedback form? On, it's in the chat box, sir. You can okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. To the message chat box, yes, sir. And yeah, yeah, oh, giving, fine, uh, fine. Giving the participants. Okay, sir. We will be giving the participants ten minutes after the uh, session now, and they can fill in, and thereafter we will disconnect, and the link will also be uh, inactivated. 